Well, the time has come, you guys. I finally feel like I'm gonna say it now because I'm sure I've stood on this for a long time. I think I have a new white goat. <laughs> no. Uh oh. You switching up? I'm so sorry. We're having a Sean Evans. So thank you for saying that. Uh, people know if you are a long time listener of the pod, <laughs> even if you just started listening to this the past three months, I've said it like six times already. My white goat is Sean Evans. I love him from Hot Ones. I think he's literally the best person ever. And we're birthday twins. But I I just cannot deny that this man right here, I'm like, wait, I've been sleeping on him. So when I say his name, I need you guys to give me your honest reactions and tell me if I'm wilding or not. And if I should leave Sean to second place or not. So like the first word that comes to my head type shit? Yeah, it's just like, just give me your honest reactions. Please hold me accountable. Well, can we be for honest? switching up. I don't know if my brother knows many white names. No, he knows. He knows. He knows. Oh, so, wait, actually, I don't know if I know this. Okay, okay. I'll Google it. I'm going to be honest. Ready? I got a phone present. But I got you because I'm, I'm familiar. I dabble, but this, I don't know if Alex is going to be, you I know. I got a phone present. My admiration for him has just was just so strong that I had to, I had to give him the ranking. So my new white goal is Channing Tatum. Okay. Douche. It's like, nah. <laughs> Damn. No, because it's funny said, because, okay. because when he came on the screen for Deadpool, you fell asleep. Yo, I went back to see it and his accent was so fucked up. No. Okay. Yeah. They played into, no, no. But people. He was like, we've got to go fight. <laughs> no, oh, I'm not to make a name for myself. I have to make a no, name no, for myself. No, no. But we people say, fight. okay, I know it sounded crazy, but people who are actually from, like people who actually have a Cajun yeah. accent, they were like, yo, actually, this is accurate. Like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm making fun of his voice and my voice is fucked. Yeah, but the reason why him. I was like it's thinking crazy. about it, like he, Channing Tatum is so, I won't say he's underrated because he's like an A-list celebrity, but he could dance 21, uh, no, no, he, he's funny 21 Jump Street. Mm -hmm. um, whatchamacallit, Step Up. He could act. He could do serious roles. He could do lovey dovey roles. I'm just man, like, give this man his flowers. I feel like a no? lot of white boys could do that. No, <laughs> not to the level that he. See, I knew this would happen. This I, I didn't want to bring it up. What was that Gigolo film he was in? Oh, uh, Magic Mike. Magic Mike. Yeah, you know. You I just feel that? like he could do it. I all. ain't see it, but I saw. It. You ain't see it. Okay. So from afar. All right. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's so underappreciated. Like he's really good at everything, and yeah. we just kind of like we're like, oh yeah, that's Channing Tatum, whatever, whatever. But if you really think about it, he's good at he's the goat. He's a white goat. You sound like you're trying to convince yourself. Right? Yeah. Are you no, sold? No, no, no. I'm trying, Are you so? I'm, I'm telling you guys my reasoning. You sure? So no more Sean Evans. I don't know. It just feels that, so wrong. It does feel wrong. You cheating? You know I'm a loyal girl. Like I <laughs> when I have one thing, I just stick with it forever. You, you know what it is with <sighs> Sean Evans? He's kind of like a hidden gem. So when you say that's your white goat, it kind of hit a little bit different than when you say an A-list actor uh, mainstream. who got like pecs and shit. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he's very popular, Channing Tatum, but people don't really appreciate him. Like no one calls him their goat. He's just like, whatever. Like we take advantage of him, I feel like. The women okay. used to love him back in the day. I know, no, but as a, as a, he just just look at his resume. It's like what it is, what it is. And 21 it's okay. Jump Street, Step Up, all the all the Nicholas Sparks movies, like it, Reggie, and he just has a new one. As your friend, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this truth. Don't do it, and it is okay. Uh oh, I promise you. It, like okay. we don't have to be in denial, and you know, as you grow older, <laughs> your palate just changes for what it is that you don't deem, you know, desirable or attractive. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I think, my white goes. I don't find them attractive. I just admire them. You like their work. Like it wasn't like I was like I wanted to date Sean Evans. You know, never. It was never that. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, but yours, my Channing taste Tatum. changed. I, I think your taste just changed a little bit, and now, yeah, you just going for like buff white guys. I don't, I don't <laughs> no, feel, no, that's not true. I don't feel accepted by you guys right now, and I feel like a little uneasy. I, was, <laughs> I feel like you guys are judging me. Like, damn, she's not loyal. No, no, no. You good? You good? I'm glad you've made some uh, new acquaintances. You know, and you've made certain things clear. Say, Vaughn, get down. What I gotta do? Somebody shooting? They shooting outside. Who? At who? Me? Some young niggas. Not at me. Uh -oh. nah, Again? Not, not some. All, all of the young niggas. It's, it's never going to stop, Savon. Them young niggas is looking for you. Cos Nottingham, the A&P house. <laughs> they want to do you like they did Pookie from... Is, uh, that, is that what we're starting? <laughs> I'm just telling you what, what the streets is saying right now to me. I'm trying to make sure my homie good. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. Saying? I'm good. Yeah. It was you know, a long we weekend. It was Labor Day weekend. Wasn't it? It, it was an extremely long, fulfilling weekend. I love I it. must say, it was Great a word. fulfilling weekend. Yeah. Uh, before we get into the weekend, because I did go to Joe's birthday party. I was there. There was some legends in the building. Happy birthday, Joe. Um, y'all was there in spirit, for sure. Everybody was asking about y'all. You held it down. You held it down. Uh, so I feel like maybe Maybe we don't even gotta really introduce who we are, but in case okay, you don't know who crazy. we are, what's going on, y'all? It's the Needs to Know Podcast. Uh, my name is Savon. We are back with another episode. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, we, we we definitely appreciate y'all, and I can't what? wait to get into the fuck shit. What was yeah. that, Savon? The what world knows who you what are. You switched up. What was what? 
Just just say your intro with your yeah. chest. Don't we you. love it. I said my... It, nah, oh, you ain't right. Oh, you meant the fat. You ain't right. I, no, I forgot about it this week. You ain't right. I got so much other shit on my mind, bro. I forgot about me. <laughs> uh, I thought I thought you were I thought you were like shy about it. We're like, no, say mom, we love it. Too. No, I honestly, yeah. Say this is your second introduction to the world. You got new eyes on. It's you got not, younger eyes. Your now, second so introduction gotta, to the world is crazy. Wait, what do you mean? crazy. He's born again. Nah, because he, <laughs> hey, we, you had a long week. So you had you had a lot of new eyes on you. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I right. really don't think it was so, a long week because a lot of the shit that Kai Sinai and Duke Dennis was saying, I ain't really agree with that shit. But it's okay. Oh, we'll get to it. Okay. See, he yeah. doubled down. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to it. What up, y'all? It's your boy A. As always, the Paco Rabone Poppy. Never alone, always with the posse. This is me. I just have allergies. It's not COVID. I check. I love y'all. <laughs> Bear with me. I hope it's not COVID. I love a nasally voice though. Nah, I think it I feel like it's cute. Right. Like when people are sick, yeah. I think I think it's cute. No, you don't, because you hate Adam Levine. <laughs> But he's not sick. He just sings like that on purpose. <laughs> I know him, Maroon Five. Oh, now I'm angry again. I know my whites a little bit. <laughs> okay, period. a little bit, a little bit. Nah, nah, don't get too excited. Oh, what's up, guys? It's me, Reggie. I feel extra blessed to be here, and everybody, tune to the YouTube because I'm wearing a cute uh, UVA shirt. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yes. Now this one's for Reggie. Oh my now, god! Now this one's for Reggie because this I is how love this, song. this is how we start in the pod. God damn it! Because this is how the... I was feeling. <laughs> it's the move right here. They don't know about this. Though. They don't know. About they don't this. know about this. That's what we came up with. This past weekend, we stepped out. I stepped out a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Reggie, you want to give an intro to your favorite song ever? Life is such a good thing. Shout out to Day Twenty Six. Or day forty eight, whatever they was calling niggas on the weekend. Okay, I knew. Okay, say the context first. Who's calling who? What? Yeah, let's be clear. I took an ill ass picture over the weekend. I thought it was hard. Don't it feel good when you when you do some shit and it's photogenic? I thought it was really a good flick. All of a sudden, I love this part. This is classic. Shout out to day twenty six, man. And shout out to Reggie for like resurrecting their name in the algorithm because there was an image that was floating around. Shout out to Jay Wan. I think Jay Wan posted it. On his Twitter, it was yeah. Jaywan, myself, and most of the Joe Bunny podcast. Guys, it was Joe, it was Ice, it was Ish, it was Parks. Fire. It was. A, I thought it was a really dope picture. Um, and that stemmed from Joe's birthday party. Right. Big forty four in the building. It was a lot of people in the building. I saw some legends. I don't really get starstruck too much, but. Especially in this media game, there's some people who's a little bit more accessible, uh, some people who you see a little bit more than others. Yeah. And so whenever you see an Angie Martinez, which was my first time being in the same room as an Angie Martinez. I was there in there. Um, it got real thin <laughs> when she walked in, I, I must admit. When it, yeah, like, yeah. She, she's one of those ones. And drunkenly leaving the first place. Going to the second place, um, her and I exited at the same time, and on some drunk, drunk man shit, I say, "Hey, yo, Angie, you a legend? <laughs> you ain't, you ain't you Angie." And that. I just kept it pushing. <laughs> you, <laughs> you didn't say what I told you to say. I did it. I told, I, I told Savon to say, "Yo, you know we both Capricorns." I couldn't you know, do you know, that that, that's Savon's favorite line. <laughs> sure and we gonna it talk is. about some Capricorns. It is. Well, it is. I need yeah. to just provide context because for the people that don't know why we randomly played a Day Twenty Six song, <laughs> so Jaywan <laughs> tweeted a picture of the crew, the the Joe Bunn and and Savon and Jaywan and Parks, everyone there, and they were just all standing like this. <laughs> like so I quote cover. tweeted it and said, I'm telling my kids it's day 26. <laughs> and I, I just like that people appreciated it, but I really wanted to say, Oh, this is, I'm telling them this was day 46. <laughs> but I feel like it wouldn't land because people want to understand yeah. the reference. You know, if I, yeah, if I came out the yeah, gate yeah, with that, yeah, yeah. so now in the comments, everybody's stealing my joke, but it's okay. Yeah, nah, you smoked that <laughs> though. Nah, man. That's fine. And I think the image, I think we look great. And I think it's it a great picture. picture. We Very put out picture. an image, like, I mean, yeah. I put out an album. We might move some units. <laughs> I ain't going front. You going to sing? We know Jay Wong going to rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have no choice. Okay. Nah, Parks can mix it. Nah, please don't sing. Parks can Me, mix it. Ish, and Ice would have to do vocals in that okay. group yeah. because Ad-libs. Joe and Jay Wan, they're the rappers clearly in that picture. Yeah, they got the verses. Okay, okay, We got okay. super producer, mix, master man, and Parks. It's album. And so for vocals and backgrounds and ad-libs, yeah. it would be me, Ice, and Ish. Wait, and I think we do that? a phenomenal job. <laughs> he could do it. He could, he could do a little riff. I could sing. Uh, no, you can't. But you can do a little nah, riff. Nah, for real. Okay, sing a song. Sing, so sing a song. Nah, I'm dead ass though. Let me hear it. Yes. Every time I sing, you go shut that bum ass voice up. I never say that. I said that to you. I said that to you. Yes, you did. Yo, you be just getting on the pod. Stop telling the truth. You be around me too much, nigga. Like, stop lying. What the fuck? Stop running. Say long ahead. Hit him up. Yeah, me too. But no, it was a phenomenal time. It was a phenomenal time. That's what's up. And shout to Jay Wan too. He's been on this podcast for sure. He has, and he's killing shit. Um, I think the timing of everything was just so crazy too because. At the time of his birthday party, like me, I really, 
Not that I didn't want to go because it was Joe's party. I just didn't want to leave my crib. Like, I don't like leaving my house like that. Labor Day weekend. Yeah, for the most part, I like to just kind of chill, regroup, whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, fuck it. I'm a ghost. My guy, Joe, he popped out to the mixer. Even if I go doly, I'm going to still pop out. That's just what we do. So I ended up going. And in the midst of me going, all of the shit was happening with the Kai Sinat and the <laughs> AMP. So as unfamiliar as I was the last time we recorded this podcast, oh, I got real familiar. Oh, did you? I got re familiar real quick. You tapped in there. No, and also not just the Kai Sinat reacting to us, which is what happened, reacting to the pod. Literally, yeah. he put it on a stream for the, the biggest streamer in the world, put our show on his show. But also it was in um, it was in conjunction with the Meek Mill stuff, with the Mandy stuff. Absolutely. So that's why that's like it was like a really big week Mandy, for us. Mandy, girl, girl, girl. <laughs> it blew up Salute. even it blew up two weeks after the actual episode. Yeah. And it just kept going. Yeah. People don't play about Meek. I'm glad yeah. she found out. <laughs> They're still going. But yeah. me, and, me, and yeah. me, so me and Mandy, we've been on the phone, obviously, right. like mm -hmm. checking on my friend's mental health, right? So <laughs> after all them comments, you have to checking on my friend's mental health. It's still going. And her and I both believe that Meek owes her a check. What? Hey y'all, go y'all so on. entitled. No, why does you didn't he owe her his. a check <laughs> so for being like nobody can name five Meek Mill songs? Because I need y'all to really think about this and take <laughs> our <laughs> bias away, and yeah, sure. just think about the internet and how the internet has perceived Meek Mill. Okay. Okay. Meek has been getting killed and slandered online for years. Mm -hmm. I have not seen Meek Mill in a positive light online <laughs> for years. Not saying he doesn't deserve it. I'm just telling you what the internet streets tell mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Like, like there hasn't been a moment like that. People yeah. don't. Salute Meek in that way. So nah. for her to create a moment by looking like an ass on camera on our <laughs> pod, she yeah. he maybe his team owes her a check. Maybe not Meek. Somebody mm -hmm. owe Mandy a check. But you're right though. For getting everybody to love Meek. Because yeah. people yeah. went up like that in the comments because Meek is amazing and they love Meek, not because of Mandy. Right. <laughs> like that's yeah. what, that's what I see, like, like I see it as. And it's just good to see conversation around Meek be positive again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, but that's what I'm saying. Like hard. And yeah. that's what I'm we saying. We haven't seen that in a while. We don't see that. I don't know if it's a check, but I know that's a, yeah. We did help that. It's something. Yeah, <laughs> it's something. I don't know if it's a check, but Tell it's something. Tell him to pull up on your Meek. Pull up on us. What up? Nah, like, Meek, Meek said he's gonna have her on. What tour? He's, no, Meek said he's gonna have oh, a, yeah, bring make on a, a podcast. Show. But that was more Ever. of a flex. That wasn't like I fuck with Shorty. That was like you <laughs> like, come and find like, out. Yeah, 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 like, Yo, he tried to flex on her. Damn. But yeah, with, with the Meek happening, our phones going crazy, blogs yeah. picking it up, and then I don't think any of us thought that Kai Sinat. Like, it would get to his stream, what we said, what I said on the pod, uh -huh. what y'all yeah. checked me for. Yeah. Um, but we made it on stream, guys. I think yeah. what I love about it, I knew because, you know, we have Mason, we have Pierre. Like, they're tapped into the Kai Sinat community, the AMP community. I knew that Kai was going to hear about it. Like, yo, there's a podcast that's saying that I should leave AMP. I thought he would reference it on yeah. a stream. But he pulled up our episode and watched the entire segment and watched the apology a week later. I love that. So he did that, that was like, that's yeah. why I was freaking out. I was like, whoa, like this is really cool. Yeah, like, some people only react to little clips that they see. Yeah. And they don't really go try and find the real context for behind sure. it. So yeah, yeah. big salute to him for doing that yeah. on his platform. So and he was able to kind of assess both sides, where Savon yeah. was coming from, where Reggie, Pierre, and myself was coming from. And that we forgot dope. to add, um, when we were reci uh, reciting, when we were telling um, Savon about the names, we forgot to add Agent and... Um, oh, uh, Ray Agent. is like an honorable member. They call him Young Ray Kwan or Ray. That's the, um, <laughs> oh, that's the Asian one, right? Yeah, he's great. Yeah, um, he's, he's from, uh, dang, I forget where he's from. He's from, um, I don't want to say Vietnam. Taiwan. Hey, yo, Taiwan. 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 Fuck up. Taiwan. My bad, my bad. It's okay, I, I, I can fuck up because I'm Asian and they won't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, they sent yeah. Ray back to the army. Free my man Ray. Yeah, nah, I heard he, was, he left. He was always supposed to go, but. Nah, I know, but yeah. still. Oh, he went back because of the army? Yeah. After After high school, they, after high school, they get. Uh, or go into the army. Uh -huh. so, um, oh, real quick, that's uh, different. And we 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 created like a little um, summary of Kai's reaction mm. and some of the bullshit that I said. <laughs> and before we even get into some of the bullshit that I said, I will say this: there's some things that I'm gonna stand on, and I'm like, you're just not gonna change my mind. I think we're all like that. Like good. the Kevin Hart point. Like I still stand on that, and it doesn't take away from anything that the AMP guys are doing. Obviously, I'm a little bit more tapped in now. I'm a little bit more familiar. <laughs> I bet. But I still stand on Kevin Hart's not doing certain shit if Kai Sinat's not there. And it's not a knock to any of them. I because they all got motion. I'll ask you this. Let's say there was no Kai Sinat in that AMP mansion, right? He's also said on stream that he wasn't as big, like the cousin Kai Sinat that we know now. He wasn't that until he joined him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just say Kai never joined him. Wouldn't there, wouldn't there have to be one number one in that AMP group 
that celebrities and media personnel would default to, like they do Kai Sinat. But they might have not gotten the attention of a, of a Kevin Hart. It was Kai Sinat. Like, he was the special one. But, uh, yeah. but I think during that discussion, yeah. I think our point was, like, I, because I agree with Savon, I do mm. think that Kai Sinat was the reason that Kevin Hart, you know, did the freestyle and, like, collaborate with them. But during the initial discussion, Savon was like, it kind of made, you kind of made it seem like, no, none of them have motion. And that was the argument. <laughs> yeah. But now, yeah, we all kind of, up, bro. we're all more of a common ground now and oh, two, for sure. and two for most people that don't know agent started agent and um agent started um a amp and then he brought on the uh, phantom and then duke kind of was toying around with the idea but then duke originally or finally um joined and so now without that whole thing coming together with uh starting with agent that probably wouldn't have happened but like kai said he probably would have been successful because again, he was doing videos at uh, I think he went to SUNY Morrisville before he dropped out. Yeah. Um, and then like he, again, he would have been successful regardless. But to be there with everyone in the same house doing the same thing, that's yeah. kind of what's shown a light on all the stuff that he's doing now. That's my argument to y'all. Like I don't know if he's the cost now we know now yeah. if he doesn't join them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if he doesn't join them, then does Kevin Hart come? Well, anyway, salute to the It's MP like house. a it's like a butterfly effect. Yeah. So this again, just piecemeal. Yeah, doing the AMP freestyle. He was frying you up. Not there. I think he will. <laughs> I was, a, I was a big. Oh my! I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this thing. <laughs> Would I have ever met Kevin Hart if I never joined AMP? Right. Kai wouldn't be right. in that status that <laughs> Kevin Hart loves without his whole crew that haven't streamed together. So this is just a recap. Who Chris V is? I should know who Chris next door is. <laughs> Wait. So when I said that on the last episode, I shouldn't know who Chris V is. That's his name. And, yeah. and please, y'all are gonna have to correct me on a whole bunch of shit if I start fucking up names. But when it comes to speaking on Chris V at that time, I shouldn't have did that. Yeah, I can speak. We like, told I, you. I can understand that. Maybe I shouldn't have did that. I wasn't informed. But there's certain things during that conversation I was informed about, and I still hey, stand on. At the end of the day, our job is to create conversation, and I'm sure there are people that may have thought the way you have thought for mm -hmm. a very long time that support the AMP members. So, and I think. It is okay to anything. say that, right? Like you can say anything you want. I think <laughs> it's okay to say yes. Everybody may have motion, and everybody's doing what it is that they're doing. But there's also just one person who crossed over the mainstream, and for whatever the reason is, he just happens to be that one. And it doesn't mean you're trying to cause division or anything. No, it does. It, no, it doesn't. No, it, no, it totally doesn't. Does. The way you, you said, said it, you, should, you said he ball. should leave. Yeah. Yeah. I never said that. Yeah, and yeah. that's yes, you I know. never say he you, should leave AMP. You said, you said if you he could shouldn't find, have. A, if am you I being could, gaslit? Yo, if you could find a clip, no, you said everybody can't go, and he should leave. No, Savon said he shouldn't have a group. Quote unquote, you said he shouldn't have a group, and that's that what, everybody can't. That's not what you meant, but that's exactly what you said. And that everybody up, can't go. Pull right? it up. I never said that. So Bro, what I, did no, you I, say? And in, in, I, in I the context sure. yeah. of everybody can't go, yeah. I was talking about the 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 situation Video. that was going on with them. Not talking about mm -hmm. Duke Dennis and all Got of them you. because I wasn't informed. I was talking about the bullshit around his name, meaning everybody can't go. Which again, I spoke out of term in that, and I can stay. <laughs> uh, cool, I got that. I apologize. I don't want no smoke for that because that's just <laughs> ill-informed, and you shouldn't do that. But. In regards to everything else, I never said he shouldn't fuck with Duke Dennis or AMP. Not once did I say that. I wasn't. I didn't even know who they were. But you said leave the group. <laughs> Savon, you did say that. I'm not I didn't get, say, pull nah, it up. You definitely said. I never you said that. I didn't know he you was did, in the group. Bro. Nah, bro. You trust me. You definitely said. I didn't Kai know what AMP was four you, weeks ago. You said okay, Kai so maybe, shouldn't be shouldn't have a group. Yeah, no, maybe. I said he needs to be careful of who he has around I, him. When nah, I was you said a lot more than that. <laughs> yo, bro. I go for a project. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I, I, yeah, somebody pull I it up. I feel like we have to pull it up now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you did? Nah, know. cause y'all trying to mix my words, and that's one of the things. Nah, bro. Again, nah, bro. You said a lot. And, and too, look, people are gonna take what you say and I don't, don't understand <laughs> the. Co I don't understand what you meant behind. It. They're gonna take what you say literally. Well, so I, I, I edited said. the clip. I actually seen the. Uh, a, a podcast. I seen a podcast. Of this a is Duke Dennis. Mm -hmm. I love his voice. Yeah, Kai should leave. <laughs> <laughs> I never said he should leave hey, AMP. I seen a I seen a podcast that said Kai should leave AMP, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, self. <laughs> self. I now understand why they said. Podcast equipment. <laughs> I have heard that comment joke. like a million times this weekend. I've never heard it so much before between the yeah. Meek Mill comments and the Kai Sinatra, like, yo, raise the price on podcast equipment. That joke, guys. <laughs> 
You're so original. Like nah, you're honestly, I like it. And, and you know, know, it's like it's funny. It's like it's all right, right. You know what it is too. You know what it is too. That's a save on. Yeah. Most people know save on, but to be introduced to the world with a take that's you know taken out of context like that is kind of crazy. So if I didn't know yeah. save on or didn't know the need to know pod or didn't haven't seen an episode about us, I'd probably think he's wild and like. Get the podcast mic out of him, out of, out of his face, kind of thing. But again, you gotta understand the con the context. And Alex, it's like what you said about Matt, uh, about um, Mandy. To know Mandy is to love Mandy. To know Save on, on that list too. Yeah. Like when you meet them in don't person, they're list. great. Don't nah, what you mean that's your homie? Don't put me on that list. That's your homie. It's different though. <laughs> <laughs> it's what the fuck we talk about. Stupid. And I appreciate how they both handled it. And, really? and yeah. again, it made me like. <laughs> just tapping a little bit more on who they are and what it is that they're doing. But I can also say, I think the world of streaming is massive. Mm -hmm. And when we get put inside like our kind of filter bubble, so to speak, in our echo chambers, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm in the podcast world. So I'm going to know a lot more about podcasters than I am about streamers. And I'm sure a lot of the people who are tapped in with the streaming world, they don't give a fuck about the podcast world. No matter how big the person may be, no matter what that person is doing in that space, it's just not something that catches your attention. So as big as some of the folks in AMP are, Right. And I had to learn and do my due diligence to see how big they are. And not not in a way because I, I feel no way. No, I just had to get educated. I still don't give a fuck about them. Like, I'm still not tapped into yo, streaming. Yo. What you, mean? What? you know, it's okay <laughs> if Savon does not give a fuck about AMP. Like, that's fine. Oh, like, yeah, why nah, does nah, he nah. have to give a fuck? That's you know? what I'm, I'm saying. not saying. That. I'm not saying. That. I'm just saying, like, when people But I can that, acknowledge they think me it's a not shot. giving a facts. fuck yeah. doesn't take away from how great they are. Mm -hmm. No, facts. Two you guys, two things can be true. They're amazing. What I will say about this whole discourse or this whole conversation is that. Certain people have translated into the mainstream. Kai Sana is the one who translated into the mainstream. So when I say Kevin Hart's not going to pull up or I don't believe, my, my opinion, I don't believe Kevin Hart would pull up and do a sleepover and an AMP freestyle if it wasn't for Kai Sana. I think a lot of people who may not be as familiar with the streaming world would agree because Kai Sana has successfully translate it into the mainstream i i respect your opinion i do for the people that are our type though right it's hard for them to be like like phantom that pierre was mentioning he also has a nike deal yeah so it's like when you say mainstream maybe you just may not be privy to who else is as mainstream we know that kai is the big one but yo motherfuckers is not just getting nike deals he, ask some of these uh, athletes <laughs> he has a nike deal because he has influence yeah, right. That's, yeah, because he he built what he built in his arena, and he's at the top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. Shout out to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart is not with him because he is not crossed over to being mainstream and recognizable in the way that Kai Sinai Kevin is. Kevin Hart is bigger than in, Nike in your world. Ke thank you. That's the point in I'm your trying to make. In your world, because Kevin Hart bigger than Nike. And, and wait, 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 what do you mean in my and world? So you like you, you just told us you aren't yeah. as tapped in, right? For those people who are tapped into the whole streaming uh, streaming universe, Kai a, uh, Phantom. Uh, Duke, Agent, Chris, er and Davis, everybody's tapped in with them. Everybody knows who, is, who they everybody are. Everybody is not tapped the, in with the, them. The community of them. I don't, of know, course. I don't know if everyone's tapped in with them. That's not no, my point. I'm talking, about, I'm, 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 I'm talking about yeah. the community who's involved. Oh, yeah, that's I'm not talking to That's them. a given, though, P. That's a given. Yeah, like, what I, I'm, I'm what speaking what of that. I acknowledge is, that. What I'm saying is I know Kevin Hart is massive. <laughs> I also have known Nike before Kevin Hart. You know what I mean? So we could both say that these things are both mainstream things. You know what I mean? So it's like, how do you gauge it? I, all right. How do, how do I gauge it is? I think like Nike was before Kevin Hart. I think big companies, this big business, mm -hmm. you want to put your brand, you want to put your name, you want to do business with people who are doing it, whatever they're doing at the top of their industry. So like a Kevin Nike, Hart. like a Nike. No, I think there's different. The mm -hmm. difference between a Nike and a Kevin Hart mm -hmm. is that. Nike is just, it's just about market share when you get to a certain point, right? Big companies want to partner with big people or influencers or streamers or whatever they fucking call any people today. Like those are what the big brands want to attach themselves to because they want to be with you. So Adidas is not with you. Or so Puma is not, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's a partnership and he earned that and he mm -hmm. deserves that. I'm not taking away anything from that. But when you have individual talents and stars like a Kevin Hart, like a Nicki Minaj, Offset. people but who don't necessarily attach themselves to influencers in that way. It's not true. What do you mean it's not true? It's Unless a, they a, cross a, over to the mainstream. I don't a, see a lot of these big A-list people with these sub streamers i'm not even saying substitute what all i'm saying is that kevin hart benefited from doing with who 
I, I know that. That's the easy part with Kai Sinai. I'm not. What I'm saying is, it wasn't Kai just, Sinai, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Kai Sinai can also be viewed as a business like Nike, where it's mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. We also want to be included in the revenue share and what's new and who's a new influencer to also promote what I have going on. But y'all keep talking so, about the other folks of the group. No, no, no. I was only bringing up Nike to your mainstream point. Kai, uh, Nike and Kevin Hart are both mainstream to me. So to it being mainstream is like maybe that's a bit subjective in how you view mainstream because Nike's a pretty fucking big company. Like I said, I knew that before Kevin Hart. And on that episode, it wasn't only Kai on that episode. Drewski was there, Ben was there, and a bunch of other people associated with Kai. Whose stream was it on? It was on Kai. It was on Kai's Kai, so not stream. That's the given. Yeah. Drew, Drewski is not a part of AMP. Drewski is his own entity. Comedian, global commercials, Google, all these brands, prize picks. Like, yeah. Drewski is his own thing, mm -hmm. right? Kevin Hart is his own thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that they had it in the AMP house, of course, you're going to include all the other folks, which I saw a lot of the other people that's tapped in or that's from the streaming world be there and collaborate on that stream, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the reason and the persons that it lived on, the IP that it lived on was Kai Sinai. That mm -hmm. was the draw. That's all I'm saying. And it's not a knock to what anybody else is doing. But... Mm -hmm. Like, remove the ego and just say, oh, yeah, he is the one. And there's nothing wrong with that because everybody else still got motion. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. But I, don't, I can't speak for other niggas. If other niggas feel like they the one, like, yeah. I, I think differently, bro. I'm I sorry. And, and, we know, because I already told you last week, we know Ke uh, Kai Sinai is the most identifiable one. Like, to, bro, that's a to some. We know that already. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, to not to, okay. Not, no, to, I'm, I'm saying to, to some. He was just number one on yeah, Rolling Stone's yeah. most yeah. fucking influencer, influencer creator in the world. Yeah, we like, know that. It's yeah. not to some. Y'all keep trying to make it seem like I'm hating on the streamers. No, no, you're not, not hating. We just want you to see another side of maybe how you might. You know, view things subjectively. That's all, because we know that Kai Sinai is the most identical member, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. not an argument. <laughs> I'm just saying, if there's other people in there with Nike deals, I'm like, mm -hmm. damn, Nike's pretty mainstream too. I think we could all agree that Kai Sinai is the most popular, mm -hmm. but we're gonna never downplay the rest of AMP. <laughs> they are also mainstream. <laughs> Boom, we're yeah. done. Thank you. <laughs> they done shooting outside, man. They good. I mean, this episode still got to drop. So Honestly, I'm <laughs> seeing Meek, I'm, excuse me, Mandy, take all the Meek comments and Savon take all the AMP comments. It was very inspiring. No, honestly. I told Savon. Tough skin. No, literally, and like sometimes, been... I, I, so, uh, sooner or later, after day three, you just kind of get numb to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they were our sacrificial lamb for the weekend. And no, now we're up. Lambs. So, thank you, guys. It's a part of the game, though. I ain't going to lie to you. Definitely a part of the game. Yeah. Definitely a part of the game. <laughs> and my mentions are still in shambles. <laughs> Damn. And, it, and it's okay because yeah, okay. we live another day. Absolutely. And I feel like today is where I really <laughs> got my shit off. Like, I feel like that's I'm, why I'm I let clear. you go because I'm it's clear. like, like I, I'm clear in yeah. what I, I think tell. now and what it is that I feel, which is one, what? Go for it. <laughs> I don't want to like not, keep it going because go I know we're about to like close it up, but I cannot wait to rewatch the other episode and see if you really didn't say that. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> I know I didn't say that. I'm, okay, no, no, I really, bet. I hope. Savon is right, honestly, because then we would have to rethink. I'm telling you, know? you, you have to rethink. You literally <laughs> said Kai shouldn't have a group. I was editing the clip. You literally said Kai so shouldn't no, I'm not have tripping. a group. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll rewatch it all together. We can't rewatch it now. Yeah, let's you know? put money up. All right, let's revisit it. I'm not a gambler. hundred dollars. Let's do it. Go hundred too. Right. Alex, you, you want it too? Yeah, let's do it. Right, okay, but we have to be exact. Like Savon did not say. No, Savon said they shouldn't have a group. No, is that the bet? I'm saying Savon said Kai literally should not have a group. Okay. We have it on camera. Boom. <laughs> We're going to revisit this next week, guys. Tune in next week. <laughs> but he doesn't have a group. Shout he joined out. a group. All right. All right. That's a fact. This is why I said we should be clear because I know this is going to happen next week. But like, but I said that I didn't say this. You know, like, ain't nobody getting that money to you. Oh my God. My mentions aren't, my mentions are in shambles too, but it's none of it is about me. So I'm, I'm doing all right. Nah, he bigged us up. He said me and Alex be tapped in. He said, you know what I mean? And yeah, but yeah, you all right though. You good now. You, you strong, you know what I mean? You used to this. Oh, listen, before we go any further, also, rest in peace, Fat Man Scoop, man. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God, it was reported. Actually, unfortunately, we 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 got to see a video of him performing, yeah. and he collapsed. And his last few words was him trying to amp the crowd up and get him excited, which is kind of, yo, what's so funny? Yo, what's so funny? Nah, it's save on. Yo, save on. What is so funny, you bro? Saw you saw it? I'm just talking about how the shit uh, went down. He over here smiling. You good? 
Yo, you bro, they can't hear me. Just keep going, bro. <laughs> nah, I'm old, he's he's so old. Old. But he's camera work. He's edited. Like, just keep going, bro. Nah, he's thinking I about the. Quiet. I'm trying to get serious. Nah, I know and I what he's about. Smiling. Nah, he's crazy. thinking about what used to happen when Fat Man Scoop songs came on. Fat Man Scoop, that's uh, Fat Man Scoop. Yeah, I understand. Hey, bro. rest in power to Fat Man Scoop, oh, a legend. It's very um, it's pretty tragic because we're kind of losing some of our hip hop. Spokesman, right? Like earlier, we we lost Mr. C, and now we're losing Fat Man Scoop. Like these are people that were pivotal in hip hop culture at the parties. You know what I'm saying? He's the one on the Missy Elliott records. You know, mm -hmm. a plethora of other party Lose records. Control. Yo, you guys know I'm obsessed with You Got Served. It is very well documented, yeah. and he's the reason why Drop is so iconic. And I don't, I cannot concentrate because Savon is <laughs> to my right, and he's giggling crazy, his ass yo. off. Like what the fuck is so funny, yo? Okay, can you tell? Why are you laughing? <laughs> all right, yo. Regardless, if it's yeah, it's okay, okay, okay. laughing. All we saying is rest in power for rest in power for sure. Legend. It's, it's crazy because if you, you ask Eddie at the latest mixer, <laughs> I, I put Fat Man Scoop. Who fucking the night? <laughs> no, no, like Who I need that. It's so iconic. Yeah. Like, no, if that's the reason why you're laughing, I, f I feel like I love that because it's like he's so iconic. And yeah. my favorite, do you guys know my favorite line of his? Oh no. When he's like, what's your zodiac sign? Because that's me. <laughs> that's literally me. Literally. He's so zodiac fucking time? iconic. Like you yeah, don't yeah. like you listen to his voice for 0.3 seconds and you know exactly who it is. Rest yeah. in peace, Fat Man Scoop. Yeah, literally nah, so iconic. For real. Pat for sure. doing what he loved doing, so that's love. Yeah, like, you want to hear funny story <laughs> i remember i was in high school and the part that came on where he's like uh if you got a hundred dollar bill put your hands up you i was hyped because i had a hundred so i put that joint up <laughs> one of the most legendary voices in hip-hop to be honest one of ho, the most legendary ho, voices ho, man ho, so ho. just gotta, hearing his name put, put a smile up. on my face that's all it was oh nah he got that's that energy it was. he brings that energy and no honestly bullshit. when it first got reported because Everything happened so fast, right? Yeah. They oh reported gosh. that he had collapsed on stage. Yeah, we saw and the video And then we didn't really know what was happening. There was like a moment in time. There was a gap just trying to figure out what the medical emergency was. And then they announced that he had passed away. Mm -hmm. And so then crazy. the first thing I do, at least, is I go and read the comments. Because I want to see what people are saying, how people are feeling. And in the moment, it felt really insensitive to see the comments of people saying, Yo, at least he passed away doing what he loved. You know, his last words was, yo, put your hands in the air, make some make noise. Make some noise. That's right? insensitive? That, for me, at the time, because oh. it was happening in real life. Oh. But then, fast forward a few days later, when you think about it, it's mm. so poetic I in a way, that, too, right? Yeah. Because for sure. I know we all hate to kind of admit Man. this, and nobody wants to think about it, but we all have a date, right? We all have a day, but we we not going to be here. Mm. As young as we are, as athletic as you are, as much as you may eat kale and fucking pita chips, mm -hmm. right? Same like, else. we're all going to go at some point, and you, and never, you never wish know. that. You never wish that on anybody. You never know when it's going to happen, but... I like it's almost like a movie script. Like when you tell your kids one day, yo, you know that the the DJ you hear on this song, the way he passed away, mm -hmm. he was on stage and he said his final famous words, put yeah. your hands in the air, make some noise, and then right after that, mm. he checked out. It's like it's almost, you know, it's it's it's, it's poetic in the way that you went, uh, uh, the way that he went. I don't know to me, I don't know if this is going to land, but it's like you know when people like die being a hero, like a firefighter, he he dies doing his task, doing like what he committed his life to do. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing with Fat Man Scoop. He died on stage, mm -hmm. and he died doing what he loved. I just feel like I don't know. Not to make it like a if you look at the more positive side of it, even though it's, we're talking about death, that's kind of beautiful. Like you know, yeah, in a way, absolutely, yeah. yeah like come on, you can only <sighs> some people pass in way more tragic ways. Mm -hmm. He was at least surrounded by some fans and some love. Yeah. At the time of at the time of this recording, I don't think we have the um cause, the cause of death. Of death. No, right? Yeah, I don't yet. think we have the not cause yet. of death, but for it to be so sudden, I think everybody could say, you know, just just keep checking on your health. Um just another legend lost at a very young age, 53. 53 is extremely young. Yeah, yeah. When you're old. younger, you think 53 is old and all of that, but like mm -hmm. 53 is extremely young, a lot of life to live. Mm -hmm. As you see, he's still on stage. He's still mm -hmm. rocking shit. For real. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, everybody, you know, just 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 love on your people, man. And don't for take real. people for granted. Yeah. And again, he's one of the names, one of the voices, one of the skill sets where it's our jobs as the millennials, even the Gen Zs, mm -hmm. like we got to make sure we keep that name alive mm -hmm. because yeah. the older generation, they already know. They already are tapped in. They know Fat Man Scoop. They grew up yeah. with Fat Man Scoop. On the radio. Um, but it's our job to make sure that 
we continue to keep his name and, and all of the DJs and the forefathers that came before us, like the DJ K Slaves who passed away. Yeah. I know how impactful C, he was. C, he was in his 50s C, all, all of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. It's our job to make sure that we continue to keep their names alive, their legacies alive. We started this episode talking about Angie Martinez. Mm -hmm. She's another one, super active. Everybody knows who Angie is, but Angie's, she's not trying to compete. She's not on the Elliot Wilson where it's like, look, I'm a legend, but I still want to compete. Like she ain't in that era. So it's up to us to make sure we, we continue her, to educate, yeah. honor her, her correctly. And with all the people from that, that the previous age of hip hop and and yeah, I think that's super important. Yeah. Crazy. I agree with um Savon. Like we, especially our class and the people above us, we're it's our responsibility to keep his name alive. But it's kind of easy because it's not like when he passed away, we had to like bring back the oldies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like his songs are already in frequent rotation at our parties like today with like effortlessly. So I feel yeah. like that's pretty cool. Like we don't have to be like, oh, can you edit? Can you please play this old song? It's like, no, like he already has that in his list, yeah. his set list. So I feel like that's that's great. Yeah. And praise yeah. to his family, yeah. his friends, everyone um, who was around him and associated with him. Cause that's tough. I know that. I know that's tough. I know. Yeah, so you know, sudden. we're saying he passed on what he loved, but at the end of the day, he's still still passed, and he's not here with us mm -hmm. anymore. So, prayers to everyone involved. Everyone, um, you know, who also loves him. I'm glad yeah. we're talking about about legends and Angie Martinez because I came across this clip over the weekend, and it was Angie interviewing Drake. And the reason I saved it is because not not just because of Drake and not because of the context of what's happening, but also. It was just a pure example of how great Angie Martinez is. So this is a clip of Angie Martinez uh, interviewing Drake in his earlier part of his career. And just listen to how she kind of carries the interview. And, and it's just a masterclass. Man, I would enjoy a Drake and Kendrick kind of sparring. Oh, yeah. You should get into a rap battle. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, then that would be. Oh great. my gosh! Mm -hmm. I, like I think you. I feel like those things are of the moment. Mm -hmm. I hold it down. It'd be enjoyable. Yeah, but I do like I really do this like as far as writing goes, and it would have to be warranted because my it would listen get, to how she challenges. The bars would be scathing. I can't really? just do it out of. I can't be the first one. You wouldn't do it for sport ever. Like just to call someone out. Like, no, like a like after Kendrick's thing, you wouldn't. I, I noticed you didn't. Really this is after control, much, by the so. way. Yeah. I just like I don't know. It, it just wasn't real to me. It's like. I, I saw him after that and it was just like love so it's like was that <laughs> real or was that just like for the people you know what I mean? now listen I to this sparring kind of sport yeah but you know at the that. same time it's like you know then let it be real then you know I mean because those were harsh words right so it's like don't just you can't just say that and then see me and be like yeah man what's up pretending like nothing ever happened like, that's not real that's not to me that's not like so the nature of battling i mean there's passion behind it there's anger behind it you know and, and it's crazy because where we are today making, knowing the beef like, great music, like it's crazy, crazy. Bodies well listen to angie over, like, she's such a fucking pro twitter for like five days you know over, but you like, seem just now a little irritated by it no really? Yeah, just by even saying that it was those harsh words, it seemed like maybe it irritated you for a second. Is that wrong? No, nah, it's just like, I mean... So classy. Com like, like, coming from that situation. This is just so fucking classy. You guys know, this is, she's my go. I'm like, literally the first day I ever met Savon, like four years ago, mm -hmm. I told him, like during our interview, I was he was like, oh, who inspired you? I was like, Angie fucking Martinez. <laughs> because of that, because she doesn't have any sneaky gotcha questions. This is just what she does. And... This is the way you it works because you see how people open up to her, but yeah. she's not being all salacious and yeah. freaking like clickbaity. It's just mm -hmm. yeah. it's just an art like what she does, and she's just her, I love her so much. Her, her, her interview with um Lauren London was also oh my god, a work I literally of art too. Yes, I literally how she watched that the whole situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I watched that back like five times. I it's like a it. masterclass. Yeah. I just got a love for music. And she used to put out music. Yeah. Oh my god, and she was a, a lot video of people vixen. don't know that for real. Where Angie was laying down, she did it all. She was hot. She I mean, she still is beautiful, but yeah. and I say that with, when I say she was a video vixen, I say that with respect. Like, she was like out there, she was looking beautiful. Oh my god, she's really the blueprint. Nah, for sure. And and again, coming off of Fat Man Scoop and just thinking about the legends and thinking about the progression of hip hop, I thought it was appropriate to not only highlight that clip. Uh, because she is talking about Drake. She kind of foreshadowed some things. This was, again, after the control verse. She mm -hmm. sat down with Drake. Drake said how he felt on that control verse. A lot of people may have forgotten, but Big Sean is on that song. Yo. <laughs> it was his, wasn't it his song? It's definitely his song. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely Big it. Sean I mean, I ain't gonna say definitely that after all that, but yeah. And when it comes to talking about the blog era rappers, I deadass believe we do it better than any other podcast. I mean, not for nothing though. We really grew up in that shit. 
No, like, because, you know, we're all in the space. We all yeah. hear everybody kind of talk about, you know, the Big Sean's, the Wale's, the Kendrick's, the Drake's, the J. Cole. The Meek Mills. The Meek Mills. Oh, yeah. Can't, can't forget, forget about Meek. Meek. <laughs> can't forget about Meek. It just has to be there. It just has to be there. But when somebody like a Big Sean drops, I've listened to all the reviews yeah. and I don't feel like it's fulfilling. I feel like the it album? is our duty, especially oh. after this year. Oh. I feel like it is our duty to make sure that we are properly assessing these rappers from that time period. Ooh, and Big Sean is one of those ones for me. What? I'm sorry, what were you talking about? No, mean, he, he dropped an album. Yeah, he did. Uh, Big Sean, Better Me Than You. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Last, his first project since 2020. And you guys know that it was a whole rap beef going on. So I'm sure Sean probably wanted to <laughs> drop it drop it off a little earlier, but he had to wait till things, you know, died down a little bit. Yeah. And it was like kind of funny. It was like an ongoing joke where he like kind of teased like, oh, new music. And then some, <laughs> some shit would pop off again. He'd be like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, the timing was crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's finally out. It's about 21 songs. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it first. You got, did anybody hear it? Just directly yeah. to what you got what, what you both are saying like it wasn't fulfilling i don't know to me it was because it's like i we think you're gr- talking about the people i'm talking, talking about, about the reviews it. of yeah. the oh, album yeah. the saying, reviews weren't fulfilling yeah like oh, when, okay. I, when I, I heard other album. podcasts and i heard other outlets like oh, reviewing oh, we're gonna it, do a deep dive. yeah it wasn't yeah. They, like they didn't say anything to me that felt like oh y'all are really like, talking really, to big sean okay. like you know what i'm saying i shout out to rob markman i think rob markman he did a great assessment of uh the big sean album but i feel like everybody else kind of just you know, it was just a part of the news cycle. And I think mm-hmm. that certain artists that, again, we grew up with, all of us are in the age between 25 to 33 on this podcast. Um, we grew up with the Big Sean's, with the Wale's, with the Meeks, with the Drake's, with the J. Cole. It hits a little bit different than hearing some of the older folks talk about it. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. that's what I mean by it wasn't as fulfilling to hear okay. other people review this album. Yeah. Because I don't know if they could even appreciate it the same way that we can. Did you I know. Feel- it's because, like, I thought you said... Well, now I was mistaken, but like that you said the album wasn't fulfilling. And I wanted to say for me, it really was because we watched him grow. And for example, like the chap seeing the chapter that he's in now, fatherhood, like really like trying to not reinvent himself, but like find his new sound in this age. I thought it was super fulfilling because like that's exactly what he did. He rapped about fatherhood. He like dedicated songs to his son. I yeah. was like, oh my God, I he, love this. And he even led us into um <clears throat> kind of where he is now with his parents. I think on uh this and that with Bryson. Mm-hmm. He was talking about how um I wrote it down. He, he was talking about how his parents turned into his kids seemingly. And a lot of the album too is I think it's it felt like it was for people that um are okay with sitting down and like, okay, like he you know, this is how he changed. This is probably how life is affecting me based off of what he's saying. And like, if you're not the type of person that is into the introspective um, rap and like seeing Big Sean in this healed or healing form in his life and talking about it, mm-hmm. you'll probably miss a lot of what he's saying. Yeah, I think but I think it's yeah. Good. No, I'll fuck you on. No, no, I was I was just gonna harken back to it. I think it's it, I loved it a lot. It was I felt like it was part of it was for me. I love um, that you mentioned a bar when he said. Um, he feels like he's parents and his parents because I know everybody that I connect with on the same, like in our age, mm-hmm. feels like that to some degree. Absolutely. I was going to say, I feel like all of us in this room have yeah. literally expressed that that is a state. That's why this album hits so hard for us because, like, that is a stage we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. us, yeah. All, all four oh, of yeah, us. Oh, yeah, I got a kid. <laughs> it's really crazy this, that shift of like parenting your parents wild, and not to, not to disrespect them, but like that shift is so crazy and it hit me like, a ton of bricks like yeah, it was bro. really so crazy. and he spoke about it um on the patreon clip that reggie that we just um dropped mm-hmm. about yeah. how you know the transition scene between your sister going to college and how it affected your mom and mm-hmm. kind of what you're thinking about now when you're not home and i yeah. i love that by the way and yeah you're right i think for me i have never heard a rapper be more of themselves on an album than i heard on this yeah. really i feel like I, after listening to this album, I feel like I know Big Sean. And I think that says a lot about the album. I don't know what his goal was, right? Like, a lot of his peers are still in that race. We see Drake chasing the charts. We know Kendrick Lamar, he just came off the number one song in the fucking world for the last however many years. Like, we see where his peers are, in a sense. We know he comes from good music and Kanye. Like, everything about the blog era superstars, the Avenger, whatever you want to call these dudes... It's always been about pushing a product, selling, selling a lifestyle, Mm -hmm. competing. This album feels like a journal. For sure. 
-hmm. it feels like I'm just going to give you me. I hope you appreciate it. And if it sells, great. But I'm Mm -hmm. going to use my skills, my ability, my life experience and everything that I've been going through. And I'm just going to put it in here and it's going to sound really fucking good. The only thing that I don't know and only time can tell is how it will age, how the project will age. Am I going to want to listen to this in six months? I don't know, but I know on the first listen, on the first, (laughs) second, third, fourth, fifth listen, in the moment, I'm like, oh, Big Sean is, this is, I I know Big Sean. I know Sean Anderson. Yeah. Like he actually said stuff on the album for once. Yeah. He said a lot. No, no, I'm saying the for once wasn't directed at him. I'm saying like in the grand scope of like music Mm -hmm. these days, that's what I meant. Mm, I'm glad you said that. I want to push back a little bit Mm -hmm. because, um, well, first and foremost, salute to Big Sean. I know it's been a very tumultuous time of him trying to put out this album. A lot of roadblocks, a lot of ups and downs. So salute to you. That's my Aries twin. What up? You feel me? Like, <laughs> I got all the love in the world for Big Sean. Again, we come from the blog era. So some of these artists just kind of resonate with us a little bit more than others, right? I will say this. I hope this project really helped him mentally and that he has managed expectations with sales. Um, I only say that to say um, this is not the first time an artist or a rapper, especially a rapper, approaches rap on some mature, introspective mental health shit, right? Mm -hmm. However, what I will say is other albums that I've heard, other artists that I've heard, they did such a, and this is not a shot at Sean, they did such a good job of making bops, even though they were going through some shit. And this is two different things now, right? So now, to the general listener, right? Like, to somebody who's just a regular consumer Mm -hmm. versus someone who is a big Sean diehard fan, like Savon said, they finally can identify with him, right? They finally know him. To that person, I'm sure this album is amazing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you in the game of sales. And we're in the real world. And we in the real world, Mm -hmm. right? We've seen Eminem. I'm not afraid to, to take, take a stand. stand. Yo, de- mind you, <laughs> everybody, everybody, come take my hand and come take and walk this road together through the storm uh-huh, whatever, and the weather. Okay, call the wall. Uh-huh. Let me know that you're not alone. I don't know the last part. Me either. But at the end Wait, of the day. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What is the last word? <laughs> Can't remember, right? But we did remember all of those words, yeah. right? Okay. And that's Eminem really being vulnerable about recovery, right? Okay. Being vulnerable about the dark times in his life, but was still able enough to turn it into a bop. A bop. We've seen DMX do it. Mm-hmm. Tim, most of DMX catalog is some uh, a lot of things going down. Like it's mm-hmm. he, it sounds crazy. Yeah, but, but they're bops. But they're bops. Yeah. Every single one of them. So now. Someone who enjoys that type of music and then another person who is just maybe more mainstream in terms of how they digest music, both parties get fed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you, that was probably like the big issue for me on this project. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there weren't any records that really stuck with me. So I will say to the bot point, I will say there's two to the people who do love Big Sean, but they're not trying to fucking sit there and hear his therapy session all day mm-hmm. which well, i'm not disrespecting like i want to hear that but i think on up with the was it a jodeci sample i, I forget the Get sample on up. but it, yeah, yeah. i yeah. kind of disagree that there's no bop song i feel like no, that, that I, is a bop i think there was bop song i, yeah. I want to be clear though there there were some and right? the one where he sampled and Usher. i'll go through them yeah the, the superstar uh, who is that's a bop the, 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 the cash co- the cash code bang joint is a bop that's a bop for sure so that's three bops right there alex it's 21 songs y'all about mental health Bryson Come Tiller, on. Kodak. No. The one that with was, the, the one with Tiana is cool. It's it's cool. I see what you guys are saying. We, right? we like and and to speak to yeah. your point because I heard there was a lot of people that was saying like oh like like Joe said this I believe he was like yo I like my Big Sean with a budget right mm-hmm. I like my Big Sean with good music that's been the sentiment around Big Sean and. I hate to break the news to everybody, but him and Kanye don't fuck with each other, okay? <laughs> he did a whole gospel song dissing Kanye West, which I listened to it about six times, and at first I'm like, hey, maybe he's generalizing. That's apologize, right? Apologize yeah, yep. is a clear diss to Kanye West. And it's it a is clear it is. song dedicated to Kanye West. Did it hit? 
It did not hit. Thank but, you. But we about to just start. No, we no, love no. all of Sean to hit, but let's be no, honest. No, I'm being. Honest. I okay. said it didn't hit. It didn't hit. Okay. But he did what he came to do, which is I'm gonna get my shit off yeah. on Kanye West. And you know what really confirmed to me that mm. that was a diss at Kanye West? Mm. He put a gospel. Ending after song. <laughs> that was intentional. If there is not anything more intentional to say, that. fuck you, Kanye, yeah. for being who it is that you say you are, I'm <laughs> about to really dig into you by yeah. giving you these gospel croons yeah. at the end of the song, right? Mm. So I do think there are some bops. I think maybe and there bop, wasn't bop, money bops put behind the song. Any bops that are going to stay? Because I really there's do an think, artist. Uh-huh. I really do think On Up is going to stay. The one with the Jodeci sample. I hope it does. I, I, think, I think it I will. I hope it does. Because when Kendrick Lamar put out Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, a lot of the same complaints were that, oh, man. Kendrick is... Where were the bops on there? Oh, are you serious? I'm so serious. Where are I'm the die, die bops? Die Hard. I hope I'm N95, not too late. Father Time, Rich Spirit. I think those are great Purple songs. Hearts, Wait, Count uh, Me Out, are we, Crown, are we saying, Silent Hill. No, no. no. And Bro, these are bops. List, now, you, now, no, 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 no. Did you hear these I songs? I, of course I did. Okay. I don't know, Alex. I will say, he named like six. I will say like two to three are like replayed today. Die, Die Hard. List, Die Hard. And, and Rich and, Spirit. And Purple Hearts. Just listen. Count Me Out. I love when they count me out. Okay. I love when you count. What do you I said two to three. Listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I think, yes, they are great songs. Uh-huh. I think, yes, over time, they may have turned in a bop that you yeah. go back to. That How many songs on that album, first off? Because you just came at Big Sean for having three to four, quote unquote, bops About 19. out of 21. So About they're in the same range mm-hmm. of songs in album length, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Big Sean's album is like an hour, six minutes, or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So they're in the same range. I don't think when we first heard Mr. Morale and the Big Stepper, everybody was like, these are the bops. I think there was like two or three. Mm-hmm. And then I think there were some really great songs. Mm-hmm. And over time, what our generation does, and tell me if I'm wrong, we all consume music here. What our generation does is we listen to an album and then time determines what the bops are unless yeah. you get a gonna fuck you mean everybody heard that and Instantly. said that's the one mm-hmm. or when you hear chris brown and uh, young thug go crazy and you're like fuck that album i love that song let me, let me reword what i'm saying by bop because i think we getting carried away a little bit and maybe it's my fault when i say bop we know the theme of this album is a bit depressive right expressive but it can be both depend that's subjective okay. to who's listening right? reflective Subjective to who's listening. Introspective. Reflective, introspective. Bring all the ends. Keep going, y'all. Introspective, retrospective, whatever is respective. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we all just said. And, like, and I was like, okay, shut up. Shut up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, whatever you want, right? Like, okay, stop. I get what you're saying. What I'm saying in terms of a bop is the reason why I like the Cash Cobain record so much, right? It's a girl record. Very girl good. record is very easy to get to. So if I'm a person that knows this album isn't about happiness right mm-hmm. where are the records that are gonna make me feel a little like about? like the pick me up just to pick me up right and okay. up okay <sighs> it's uh, reggie it's to an extent right i love the sample i do but mm-hmm. i don't see that record sticking around like a count me out ken or like a purple hearts with ghost face and summer walker you know what i'm saying My life I don't, is fine. but listen and, just mm-hmm. to speak to that point mm-hmm. going back to uh kendrick's last album mm-hmm. mr morale and the big steppers mm-hmm. I don't know if that album, again, not critically acclaimed. I'm talking about just the the quote unquote bops, the songs that stuck around. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, and tell me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I've been mad wrong on this podcast, (laughs) mad time. So Mm -hmm. tell me again if I'm wrong. But I think there's maybe two or three songs that had, you know, has replay value till today. Not saying in my personal Serato, but the masses have pulled from. And yes, because Ghostface is on it. And Purple Hearts is a, a very uh, musical song. I think it's a great hip hop song. I don't know if when Kendrick did the Pop Out show, mm-hmm. a lot of people were upset because the Pop Out show was just Kendrick doing his biggest hits. Now, uh, Pierre, while, while while I'm mentioning this, maybe you could pull it up. But I would love to know the set list from the Pop Out show, and I would love to see how many songs came from Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers because I think that was let Kendrick saying. These are my biggest songs, so let me go crazy I with it. I disagree. I think those are the songs where a, a lot of those songs were subs that he kind of directed at Drake over the years. It's I even like came a timeline, in and said that. Yeah. It's like a timeline. If you mm-hmm. look at if you look at the collection of those records, he's shooting at somebody on those records. And for years we were like, 
who the fuck is this nigga talking and about? And it all connected ten years later. There you go. So it was for pretty that, crazy. I'm not I'm not too sold on that. What I will say is right. I got the list right here, by the way. Okay. Let me hear some of them. So it was it was Euphoria, DNA, Element, All Right, Swimming Pools, uh, Money Trees, King's Dead, Six Sixteen in LA. King Kunta, Humble, Like That, Still Dre. He shot on most of those songs. California Love and Not Like Us. He shot on most Wait, of those songs. Wait, I could have sworn he did Die Hard. King Kunta. He, didn't he do Die Hard because Blast came out during the Pop Out concert? No? I could have sworn, but whatever. I don't remember. Again, mm -hmm. I, I think, and, and maybe there could be some truth that nothing mm -hmm. is confirmed from that show, but when I hear that set list, I hear my biggest songs, my most identifiable songs. Also, shots were taking at. I could go through For them. Sure. Can't come I'm, to I'm with you. I'm yeah, not. I'm yeah, saying. I, yeah. I think there could be a combination of where you. what you're saying is true and what I'm saying is true as well. What I do know for a fact is none of those songs that mm -hmm. he mentioned were off of Mr. Morale. Yeah, because that, that's to my point, right? Knowing what you're expecting, you're going into the concert not expecting to be a bit depressive right this is a celebration that kendrick lamar has won True. this is why i led this whole conversation with saying i hope mentally this album and project helped big sean but he has to understand how the general public might receive some of this right i wanted to speak about just trauma really quickly right mm -hmm. um when it comes to all of our traumas the thing about trauma and especially when you're an artist we're all different people we all have different lives and our trauma is all tailored to our exact experience, right? So what makes something so impactful as an artist and what makes a song or a project or something so incredible and beautiful is that you're able to wrap people who have never been through what you've been through and bring them there. And make you make them feel To it. make them feel that. And that is what is missing on this Big Sean album, right? Really? Absolutely. What? You think so? Absolutely. Bro. I don't know. Okay, wait, hold on. Yeah, can I can I reply? So I feel like absolutely. I don't think I don't really agree because for example, the song that I always say that I keep saying on up, he was talking mm. to his son. I don't have a son, but I feel like when I was listening to songs like that, songs similar to that on this mm -hmm. album, I really felt like, oh my God, this is what he's going through as a new father. Yeah. These are the thoughts that he's having in his head. Mm. Like he really took me there in my opinion. And even, even uh, something, the, the track with Sid, he talks about how he's, he's so busy um, no, nah, you can let it let it let it play. I'll, I'll say it after. No, keep going. I'm um, listening. I like this joint. He, he was he was talking about how he's so busy that he misses out on a lot of things that are happening around his world and in his life, and I feel like a lot of us could relate to that, even right now. Uh, For sure. This is on up. Yeah. And. This is the song that you keep referencing, right, Reggie? Mm -hmm. I just love yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. Gotta get on up. Do we remember? Do we remember? Um, we cry together with Kendrick Lamar and Taylor Page. Play that. When they were both, <laughs> when they were both, it's gonna draw right back. Nah, I know, I heard that. No, it's gonna draw right back. When they weren't even rhyming on beat, where the two of them, where Kendrick Lamar and the young lady were going back and forth. Fuck you, nigga. Oh, yeah, well, fuck yeah, you, yeah, yeah, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, nigga. Well, fuck yeah. you, bitch. We all been there, right? So, though, to you guys' points, there are glimpses of of that vulnerability and uh, relatability on his album, right? Mm -hmm. This this is sprinkled in there. For me personally, I guess I'll just speak for myself. For me, it wasn't enough because when I hear We Cry Together, bro, he literally brought us to a traumatic, abusive household relationship. Even though many of us have never been there, have never done that, he brought us right to the front step of that on a creative and artistic approach. You know what I mean? So it's like, even when the album is supposed to be a bit depressive, you had so many people talking about, like, I don't see anybody talking about uh, on up as much as I he heard about uh, the Taylor Page run with Kendrick Lamar. You know what I mean? Where people are going to talk about it, they're going to mention it. But, but like, Kendrick's a bigger artist. So, I mean, going, yeah, but going the, back to our debates but, about. But if Big Sean created something artistic like that, y'all yeah, making me seem like I hate No, it, it, even <laughs> Big Sean could put out the greatest yeah. album ever. Mm -hmm. And because he's Big Sean, and because he's taking time with his music, and because he's pushed back albums, mm -hmm. and because his music has been fucking. Uh, uh, sat on or, or, or pushed to the back behind the Drake and the Kendrick and all these guys, right? Like, yeah. it's been a running joke and we all know it. 
that his music has been fucking squashed by mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar releases, right? Like mm-hmm. everybody was anticipating Kendrick dropping last week because we knew Big Sean was dropping. Was yes. It's just like the Nas and Hove joke. Mm-hmm. Every time Nas dropped, Beyonce drop a movie, a album, a diss track, a track list, a dance, a documentary, <laughs> Jay Z a drop a project. Like we know these trends, mm-hmm. so it's not just that Big Sean is Big Sean and people aren't really tapped in. I think. He's in a class, and to to his fault, I think he put himself there because of the output, mm-hmm. and maybe he was going through real life shit, and I think that's the beauty of this album, is I'm telling you all why I'm not competing at the level of my peers, because mm. I'm still in Detroit. My heart is still in Detroit, right? My initiative is still making sure that I'm breaking family trauma yep. in cycles right i haven't I love heard uh like generational I love cycles all, all of these my, things i don't want my point to get lost i don't I want it to get lost that. at all but what i'm saying is the <laughs> yeah. reason why it may not have the type of magnifying glass on it the way that a kendrick would is because kendrick is in a is he's in rare air and i know these guys came out at the same time and they may be associated with each other mm-hmm. but Kendrick and Drake in particular, and I think J. Cole at one point was in that class. I think he removed himself, and now the public looks at J. Cole a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Kendrick and when it comes to Drake, they stand alone. Mm -hmm. And so comparing anybody outside of them to each other, it's never going to resonate the same. I feel that, and I I didn't do that, and I don't want to do that. Um, When I did that with Kendrick Lamar was, and I'll do it with another artist, right? Reggie, you heard Schoolboy Q's Blue Lips, right? Yes. Is there Damn, a... I ain't hear that. Thank God for me. Did you? <laughs> Damn, I ain't hear that. I'm asking. No, I'm, I'm asking you. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> nah, I ain't hear that That's shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I ain't hear that shit. <laughs> what the fuck? I know you ain't hear that shit. I ain't hear that shit. That's my point. Like. I think he asked me because, like, I've tweeted before. <laughs> I heard it was good, but I ain't hear that shit. <laughs> Crazy. I think he singled me out because I've tweeted before yeah. that it's one of my favorite albums of right. the year so far. Reggie, name me the bigger bop. And we can both say that Big Sean is a bigger artist than Schoolboy Q, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. Wait, I don't, I, think, yeah, okay. I don't think there's a bigger bop on the Big Sean album than Thank God For Me. Give us some time. It's a Reggie. Week. I never heard Thank God For Me, low key. Nah, I feel you. When you get I to it, you'll get to it. The way that people, well, I don't know, because I have a lens of like, I follow you a lot of like hip hop lovers, but in my opinion, like the way that people reacted to Thank God for Me when Schoolboy Q dropped his album, it is very different because I don't see a lot of people collectively posting one song from the Big Sean album. That is, Honestly. And that is the point also, I'm trying to make. It's been like three days. It's definitely you know? been like three days, but to be honest with you, mm-hmm. it didn't take three days for people to post "Thank That's God true. for Me" when Schoolboy Q came out. I remember true. that. What yeah, I will yeah, say, yeah. it was it was you were able to identify. Well, hold on, I want to finish because I love all the introspective rap, y'all. I came up on fucking Outkast. Like I'm, I really love music, y'all. I don't want this shit to be, you know, uh, uh, skewed a different way. What I'm saying is, bro, there's a way to do it on a more commercial level. For maybe some of the success you're looking for, Mm -hmm. which is why I keep saying, I hope this album was really just therapy for him and him releasing that was more than enough than anything he's looking for in terms of sales of people looking for. For sure. That's why he cried. Yeah, He cried explaining, you know, all the stuff that he was going through before he released the album. So -hmm. it definitely meant a lot to him. So to say, to respond to where you were saying like, oh, I hope you can, what I'm saying is, Mm -hmm make a song that will achieve like the success you're looking for. Like I'm paraphrasing, you guys just heard him. But like while in that genre. I I know I'm mm. not like gonna be naive just, yeah. and be like Big Sean, you know, he's not looking at the numbers. He's good. I know obviously if you're an artist and you put your blood, sweat and tears into an album, of course you want it to do well. He wants to be on the billboard charts. I know he wants that, but I think more of his priority is not to see how well this album does commercially though i know that sounds a little naive it's, like it's, oh it's, it's, it's a, rainbow, it's you know, a but slope. i don't i believe it though like i, know I really what you feel like he, i really feel like he just wanted to get this off his chest he really wants to it. give this album to the world but he still you know? got to deal with the other side of I, it. I know but, reggie i agree with you 100 you know? i you know? feel like this is the album that he needed yeah. I, I you know agree with that. So saying, com- yes, we completely agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I hope the label is okay with that. <laughs> I don't. I don't. What I don't. If they're not? Who, who's his label? Who's he signed to? Do you know? I don't know if he's still I'll, Def I'll Jam. I, I, I don't know. Who's, I, maybe he's like of a subsidiary to Def Jam. I'm mm-hmm. not completely I'll sure. Find out but what I will say about Big Sean, I think he needed to get this album off mm-hmm. before he could get back to making the hits. 
Okay. In, in my opinion. Oh, no, man, I that think, was, that's what I was trying to say. I, 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 gen, I genuinely believe that Big Sean, and again, I don't know Big Sean Def Jam, at all. Yeah, yeah. Still, F, still Def Jam. I'm listening to Big Sean. Mm hmm. And there's a lot of times, especially with today's music, especially with today's artists, the microwave era, like we've been in this microwave era for years now. Yeah. And maybe it's because of streaming and maybe it's because albums are being released on a Friday. And now y'all have condensed my week so short that I have to try to consume everything in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like I know there's a lot of people who are pushing for a Tuesday release or wish that albums would go back to being dropped on a Tuesday. I think it would help. The, the life shelf of a body of work, but fuck it. We're not there. We're here on Friday. When it comes to a Big Sean, I think after listening to what he is telling us on this album and being able to relate to a lot of the shit, I don't, I don't have a kid. None of us on this podcast have children, mm -hmm. right? So maybe I can't relate to those things, but I can relate to a lot of the other things when he's talking about, yo, I'm trying to trace a million. I got a million and there's a million people trying to pull me in a million different pieces. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's just so many things that are identifiable that most artists of his caliber, most artists from his era don't discuss anymore because mm. they're so far removed from it. That's a good like, point. You can, I, I can know. feel We got a lot that of artists that still do that. I'm I named from, a plethora of them. Absol, Schoolboy Q, Kendrick them, Lamar, Pusha T. Uh, um, no, Pusha T don't do that. And I'm a Pusha T fan. Oh, Push don't do that. I know Pusha. It's just cool. Absol, Absol doesn't have the the the, I'm just the platform about the of content. a Big Sean. I'm just talking but about I'm the content. But it's not just the content. But, because but you got to you got to pair the content with the platform. I get with it. But at the end of the day, save on for people that just solely enjoy music. Right for anyone, it wasn't you, good to you. No, 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 not for me. I'm, I'm talking about in general right so now. I'm, I'm not speaking. It, to it didn't have slaps. No, it's not that it didn't have slaps. Can I play we, one song we, for you? You can't hold on. We all sang "Not Afraid" by Eminem in, in, in synchronization, in unison. He's white. I mean, I, that's not my reason for singing that. I, I don't know. My, my whole point is like, there's a. I talked about DMX. There's a way to get your message across in a cool way, and not, not just in a cool way, but in a very effective way to where it's just like not the older people or the people that are looking for this exact music from you will appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Real talk, you know there the, is. You know the beauty of this album mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. is that he didn't do that. He did what felt good to him. No, I know. I, all right, we're that, having two different conversations. No, I, I'm having more like the business side comment because I'm with y'all. Okay. This, this was is this, this is was, good to me. That's not business. <laughs> We all love what he did on this album, like we all said, and like how I intro did this. Did you, we, bro? We, no, no, we love Big Sean. That's what I'm saying. We love. Did Big you Sean. love what he did on this album? I liked what he did on this album. I love the approach, right? Because at the end of the day, you a man first, Big Sean. Whatever you, let me let me, let me be clear. Anybody can rap about whatever they want. Clear? clear. You can rap about whatever you want. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you must now manage expectations with knowing. The era you're in, what's going on in your industry, and what the type of uh, perception you'll get after you put out what you want to put out. That's all I'm saying. And like I said, I appreciate Sean giving it up on his album. Like we, like I said, I think he needed that shit. I can hear it. I guess we'll see. I think that's very valid. I get mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying. Like you're just thinking on the grand scope of things. Because like how how is it gonna play out? But I guess this will be good to revisit next week once we see Big Sean's reaction to the numbers. Right. That's when we could really discuss. Like, oh, is he really upset that this album didn't do well? Or like, yeah. I mean, not that I'm saying it will do not do well, but if it doesn't mm. go fucking triple platinum, is he gonna be upset about that? Or is he gonna make a long big speech like, yo, I just feel great that I even got this album yes. to go out. We we have to see what he thinks because at the end of the day, right now, we're kind of like hey. assuming how he's gonna feel about hey, it. Hey, cause that, that answer is enough for me. Him saying, yo, I did this for my mental health. I did mm -hmm. this cause this was mm -hmm. therapy to me. That's enough for me. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying well, is, that's what it seems all, like. But all, all, all I'm saying is, when you feel a little bit better, Big Sean, and your fans, and most of mainstream industry remember your last effort and its genre and how it was placed, how do you think that will help you going forward in terms of trying to sell? Because you still are an artist. When you say the era that we're in, mm -hmm. I will tell you one of the takeaways that I heard and what I listened. It does sound a bit, just a smidge. Mm -hmm. It does sound dated. So let's a little bit. It sounds like it's the flows, bit. the cadences. It's a little bit, yeah. It, it 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 sounds like oh yeah, this is Big Sean from 2016. Boom, you get so which is okay for the core fan base. It is, it is. That's amazing. Like we're not gonna have no issues with it, right? Mm -hmm. It was but, some songs on there I personally related to because I'm a fan of him. I go, I went, damn man. Like I've seen artists take the 
mental health approach or introspective mature rap approach and knock it out the park. I think he did <laughs> knock it out the park personally. I think well, he took that from, because from, I don't want to hear all, Chance the Rapper from, talk about this shit. From, I see, don't want to hear other... There's not many say, rappers that it. I want to listen to and be like, oh, what are you going through? Can you make this shit sound good? Like, he has been one of the ones in this when, short week of a time that I got to listen to it where I'm like, I, oh, he's he's doing mental health raps, mm -hmm. but I fuck with how it when, sounds. When I, when I say knock it out the park, Savon, I mean hit every single angle. <laughs> the sales. Hit the introspection. Hit the fans. Don't know, but hit the old fans. Hey, don't do that. Fans. Hey, don't do that. Because you, you know mean? why? Listen, because you're, you're music man. Right? Like, there's <laughs> Superman, there's Batman, there's music man. <laughs> music, you're a music man, nigga. When you put that cape on, when you put your hat on in the 1800 pockets, you Crazy. turn into music man. Like, you know. I know what time it is. In the music industry, we also know the reach and the hits and the sales has a lot to do with the business. And we also know... I'm bringing it up. But we know Big Sean has had contract issues, contractual issues. He's beef with the, one of the biggest artists in the world who he was signed to his label on. Like for him to even be able to put out an artist. And it's funny you even mention this because I heard a lot of commentary around this album saying, yo, where's the budget? I like my Big Sean with the budget. Right. And so I heard those comments before I heard the album. And then I listened to the album, and y'all are going to be so proud of me because I listened to this album without it being on shuffle. Wow, no It skips. only took six years, but <laughs> I'll take the win. I, I listened to the album. A win is a win. And it was not on shuffle. I listened wow. to it straight through. Wow. And you know what I heard? <laughs> I heard Charlie Wilson. Yeah. I heard... Um, who else the fuck? Uh, uh, Tiana uh, Taylor. Tiana, Tiana Taylor. Taylor. Was on I'm thinking Bryce of Ellie Taylor. Golden. Not, no, wait, Ellie. real quick, before y'all keep going. Mm -hmm. Before y'all keep going, because mm -hmm. I know y'all about to go crazy. Mm -hmm. I heard all the same people that y'all heard, but what stuck out to me was I heard Hit Boy. Mm -hmm. I heard Charlie Wilson. And then, you know who I really, really fucking heard? Outside of, I also heard The Dream. The Dream is not cheap. Yeah. Anybody that knows anything about The Dream, The Dream is in the in the lab for Beyonce. <laughs> you saw how he kept that feature quiet, yeah, right? Yeah, facts. It wasn't, he ain't listed, it, it wasn't listed, but I heard him. I was, I heard, like, okay. I was like, yo, is that Dream? I heard The yeah. Dream on this project. I heard all I of these people. And then you know who else I heard? I heard a voicemail, God damn it. And you know me, when people call my phone... I don't be listening to some voice. Oh, <laughs> but when motherfuckers about. get to voicemailing on the voicemail, it better be important for me to listen to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I hear Dwayne The Rock the Johnson Rock. on my album, you know what that tells me? <laughs> I got a budget. And you know when I listen to a song and I hear you I use ad libs, hold up. But I think they homies. Well, how they homies? He, he from said the on the record. He from Honolulu. He said, I don't know, gang. Ask what? niggas. Where, the, the Rock is know. Honolulu. He said he's his homie. And Big Sean is Detroit. I don't know if they homies. What I, I know, know is it costs to get The Rock's voice on my album. And you know what else I heard? Outside of just the features and outside of the voicemails and outside of all these names that I also listed, we know how the music business works. Mm -hmm. And anytime you take anything from anybody, you got to credit them mm -hmm. and you got to pay them. So when I hear him reference Rich Boy, throw some D's on, somebody got paid from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I hear him Superstar. use the ad lib of a little John on one of his songs, mm -hmm. somebody, somebody got, got paid, paid for that. that. So what I hear is a very expensive, intentional album. Because for you to do all of this and put all of this in this project, it doesn't say to me, oh, I didn't have money or I didn't put money into it. Uh, it says to me, I, the, this is the purpose of Usher samples. That's my favorite that's, song. That's that's are, but see, that's the thing, though. Getting records cleared for samples is like, that's like standard label shit, right? I think when people say big is production. It? Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah, okay. when you. Cash go band right now. He just put out an album. He got a whole bunch of samples on there. That he's he, different. He's hot. But hold on. <laughs> he's hold hot. On. I, I, that's not my point, bro. I'm just saying he had a whole bunch of samples that he could not clear before. Mm -hmm. Now that he signed, he's hot. He can get them clear. So what I'm saying is that is the job of a label regardless. So that doesn't scream super big budget to me. When people reference that though, bro, it doesn't. That's it's, crazy. What? So then we got to call. If we got 18 million niggas on my album. But that's and my standard. Album, but, but that's standard. But, all right. So can I ask you a question? It's not standard because who do you think is projected to sell more in 2024? Cash Cobain or Big Sean? I don't know what I'm saying. I really don't know. Bro. Based on who, all right, know. you know what you do know? You know mm -hmm. how labels think and you know where labels are willing to invest their money. Mm -hmm. If I'm a label and I see the wave that Cash Cobain has, I'm going to pour 
every single dime into this new act than I am against somebody who seems to be kind of one foot in, one foot out with the music. What I'm saying Do is- Do we not know that? On a, yes. On the total pole of what it takes, what's really expensive to get done on an album, clearing a sample if you're a no, notable artist is on the bottom of the list, y'all. Really? Yes. That, that's not true. It's okay. not true because you know why. Big not Sean true? has been around for over a decade. What about the game? On. Hold on, just let me finish, bro. I got you. Big Sean has been all around for over a decade. He's been with Kanye West. He signed a Def Jam. He signed a UMG Universal Music Group. Yeah, this is real shit. There are other things that cost more. Let me get into it. If you want to go get Mike Dean on your shit to turn it up or to engineer it or to finish it out or to master it. That is kind of what they mean. Like, shout out to Mixed by Ali. Mixed by Ali is industry rich boy standard. The people in the industry that got some money, they go to Mixed by Ali. Not everybody can go to Mixed by Ali. <laughs> so when you get a Mixed by Ali project, it sounds richer. <laughs> it doesn't sound like everyone else's. Clearing a sample when you've been on for over 10 years... I, Yes. What about, it, 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 what it about multiple from, multiple samples? It's hard, it, bro. It, it, it's it's not it's not that, as hard. Though. We just saw that with Bryson. That's that's the reason why Bryson's album took so long. I did see Big Sean say that he left a lot of songs off because of clearance issues. So it, it is, is difficult. Hard, bro. It's like, difficult. What I'm saying mm -hmm. is on the totem pole of other things, and because you're asking why people are saying yo big budget, big budget. When people reference that, Savon is the production nine times out of ten, it costs. <laughs> the, the, that's that can be way more sometimes as clearing it, depending on what they settle on. You so know what you're I'm saying? saying the mixing is the number one cost. Is that I, is that what I'm hearing? It's I'm saying up. it's higher on the list oh, than than clearing the samples. It can be depending on if it's a Marvin Gaye sample. Then, then and, and, that and that's the things. thing. It depends. But well, again, yeah. the, the people that we're talking about on this album, mm. I listed Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. listing Charlie Wilson. I'm listing Usher. Album. You know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. listing like these are real legit people and samples mm -hmm. and big business. Kodak, yeah, right? Like, that, but Charlie Wilson also ate from that. I'm not everybody saying everybody eat. Everybody got to eat when there's a sample I'm involved. Saying, right? Not even a sample. He's on the song. He's on the song. But yeah. all right, the samples, the ad libs. That's all I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. it, this, this is not like he didn't shoot for like. The small fries. He didn't have like no, unnamed no, no. or unknown producers. Like he had legit the biggest of the biggest on this album. This this we aren't talking small yeah. shit. I named the biggest, Beyonce, has, be, he the has Dream, some, he has some big, and the Rock. He has some big people on the list. He didn't have the biggest of the biggest. What do you? What Ellie we, Golding is also on there. Nah, she's dope. But like when we say the biggest of the biggest, bro, we're thinking like a star-studded lineup of this all is of star the big ones. What are we not? What are we, what are we talking about? Ellie Golding, <sighs> he making Dwayne like Johnson and the Dream, Larry June. Like no, I'm not no uh, Larry June is great. He's not on that yeah, list. He's, he's, he's not, not, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not okay. on the Dreams list. He's not on the Rocks list. He's not on Kodak. like the like no Kodak. What, we, what about Kodak? He's on the album. Gunna. Aaron Callen. Gunna is literally. These linking. are not sample. These Gunna, are not. Okay. That's my point though. Uh -huh. They're not sample. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. So like these people are still getting paid, and these are people who are still benefiting. Gunna. He's just linking up with anybody who fuck with him, right? And if he don't fuck with him, it's cool. Pretty much. That's what it is. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, like the artist is cool and everything, but there, there are more reasons as to why something can sound big production. A lot of uh, uh, big money, big budget. And a lot of that has to do with the production a lot of times. If I'm wrong, y'all can tell me in the comments. I'm just saying, y'all know I, I know music. Yeah, That's really I, I what agree. they be meaning by that. I see the Alchemist on here. I see Hit Boy. I see, I see names <sighs> that are identifiable, and Alchemist I know it's not Alchemist is the homie, bro. I'm not saying... I, how do you you know this? Yes, bro. You know me. I know music, bro. <laughs> yes, him and Sean are close, and this is not their first record together. But it still costs someone. Oh, for sure. But it I'm still say, costs is what I'm saying. But if you know I'm not the person, about their if, friendship. But if you know the person, the cost might not be as much. You might not charge me, but I might charge your business, which is your yeah, label, for sure. For so sure. you may not charge me a dime, but I'm gonna go to Def Jam and be mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, y'all niggas gotta put a buck fifty on it, a quarter million on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it still costs. Like what? no, no matter how cool you said the Honolulu to Detroit Connection was lit. The Rock vs. <laughs> Big Sean. You said that shit is fire, right? Fire. You said they homies. That's, you said that's they, they gang. Said. That's what they, they said. Was doing I'm just saying what they said. Bang wrestling. I don't know what they do. I'm just telling you what they said. They was going Sean crazy. Sean said they was the homies. You said know. they was homies and that's shit, That's what Sean right? said. But do you not believe <laughs> that Dwayne Johnson got a fucking he check got, for having his voice yeah. and his likeness on his album? It costs is all I'm saying. No matter what it sounds like, no matter how much it sells, when I hear him use an Usher sample, mind you, Usher just came off a Super Bowl run, y'all. Usher just came from a residency that was fucking legendary, y'all. Like, 
all no. of these people when you keep when you add it up mm -hmm. it, it costs, costs something it's a budget there it, it is expensive For to sure. make this big sean album my point is there and we know kanye all that nigga some money oh do you have six For six sure. mil my point and is there are, settling. there are smaller artists who get these things cleared maybe they might not get the same amount of splits as a bigger artist or a bigger corporation <laughs> But smaller artists still get these shits clicked. Cash Cobain was getting Jay Holiday clicked. Like, bro, there was... Nah. We t I, hear we you, I hear what you're saying. Okay. I hear what you're saying. So, I, I are did. we going to go in circles? Or you want nah, to keep nah, arguing? I'm, I'm cool with that. Because I'm down to <laughs> argue. No, no, no. Because I'm down to argue. We're on the same page. Nah, I think I got you for once. We're on the same page. <laughs> nah, that no, ass. You said Jay Holiday. I said The Rock. Chill out. There's a oh, big, talking, no, big difference. He's trying to bait you right now to keep going. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. If you want to go, I can go. I'm talking about sample... Clear rinse, and I get it. You say you saw the dream, the dream, but but those are not samples, bro. So it, it, it gets a little bit more like in you know right, intricate. A, those I know are features. I, I know what you're saying, but yeah, those I, are features. I know this sample though. I do know this sample, and then we can keep it pushing mm -hmm. because. You main Jay Holiday. Shout out to Jay Holiday. I That's see he man. was doing valet. He was doing all that shit. That's Fire songs. But when I hear this, this is a this is a sample you really got to pay for. Yeah. Hey, let's go. This is a like, and no disrespect. Superstar. I know who you are. It's a bop. No, it is one of the bops on there. <laughs> Talking about the girls. I said that. Also, did you guys see the music video? Um, he had. Tay Diggs in there and RDC World. <laughs> That's fine. It was really good. I this, love the music this video. This album got money behind it, and I'm sorry. Maybe again when when Joe spoke about it and some other people spoke about it, you know, it was very new. Yeah. This album got some money behind it, and I it don't know. Some. I don't know I how it's gonna perform. I think I what they're saying is it. it, it more money could have been spent. Yeah, when you so went we Kanye, so, so we respect your ear for identifying with the dream and the rock. Yeah, but cool. they're saying, yo, this could have been another, Top notch. another level. Hmm. Like, I, I, I hear what How many saying. more Can't, levels you want me to do? I got could. the rock on here, nigga. Do you smell what I'm cooking? And they listened to it when it was uh, like two days or a day after it dropped. Uh -huh. I and mean, that's just that one podcast just in general yeah, again shout it. out to big sean we gonna see i think this yeah. is one of those albums we got to live with just like mr morale and the big steppers i had to live My with it i think a lot of people had to live with that album mm -hmm. i think this is just one of those albums where we may have to live with it and because big sean doesn't have the credit line with us mm -hmm. in the same way that kendrick lamar has built he may have a shorter leash but i do think this is a very solid project a really good, pro it's a good project. project it's a good project it also made me feel like oh shit he needs to go on tour with Wale. That's that'd another conversation for that'd another day. Yeah, that'd be fine. Um, Wale's already going on tour, though, so I don't know if they're going to partner, partner up. He, he, be dope, he's busy, but this also made me say, yeah. oh, shit, these are two guys like, yes, we're forced to listen to Drake, and we're forced to, like, well, yeah, we are forced. We're forced well, to listen to these guys because of who they are, but then there's some people in that class where... We just love them, mm -hmm. and we're we're gonna listen to them. Mm -hmm. I think Wale and Big Sean are like the two that a lot of people just genuinely love. Mm -hmm. I think a Wiz Khalifa, he going back to like mainstream and that type of success. He just crossed over, and I don't think his priority is rap. I think sure he 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 likes to rap, but mm -hmm. I don't put him in that same air as a Wale and as a Big Sean. But this album made me really put certain things in perspective. Big Sean is not only growing with his audience, which is uh, his demographic, us for the most us. part, mm -hmm. but it, it, it was very reminiscent of a J. Cole. When J. Cole is speaking to, or when J. Cole used to, he used to really do this, to speak to being in college, being in school, growing as a, a working class person, having, uh, I'm, I'm not biracial, I'm fully black, mm -hmm. but I could imagine if you were black and you were white, uh, J. Cole was your guy. Yeah. Drake never really spoke to that. Super relatable. You know, J. Cole was telling you like, my mom white, my daddy black, I got some fucked up teeth, and I'm going to figure this thing out with my <laughs> nappy ass white hair. Yo, this is, a, dream. this is a gem for the true J. Cole fans. Do you guys know the song Like a Star? For sure. Oh, never mind. Sing that. How does like it go? Like a star. No, J you the J. Cole song. No. <laughs> Oh, see, I knew, no, it's Corinne Bailey Ray. Corinne, oh yeah, yeah Corinne Bailey Ray. Hey baby girl, down your window. 
I love oh, to see your hair flow when the wind blows. Cause he, I, I, that I just made me think of that. Cause he goes, "Welcome to the life of a nice brother, light skin of black father, white mother." <laughs> so I just, I just like, yeah. And I feel like people don't really know that song because it's from any given Sunday. But anyway, let's yeah. Go. But let's he was really talking to that back. shit. So yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. Salute to Big Sean. And my, and my last point, there are some songs on this album that you can bop to a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they will stick, but what I will say is feeding your fan base is the easy part. They've missed you. Whatever you drop for the most part, especially if they're stands, they'll receive it, they'll accept it. All I'm saying is for the other people who came up on Big Sean as well and maybe drifted away, who who help magnify who he is as an artist, mm -hmm. anticipation doesn't sound solemn. So if I'm a fan who was anticipating a Big Sean project and this is what I got, I hope there are records on here that can keep them so he can continue to magnify. Mm -hmm. That's really my point. I think, like, I, I mean, I know my opinion mm -hmm. doesn't, represent everybody who's listening to his album but i feel like i can live with that because as someone who loves and respects big sean and his career i agree with alex where there, there wasn't like the glitz and glam and the fancy buttons on this like project but i can live with that because it really feels like he said what he wanted to say himself exactly. mm -hmm. and i love that for him i do think the music is good so i yeah i like it good project like, yeah <laughs> so more of the story is say uh wrong alex is right I don't, oh no, there's no right or wrong. Stop trying to bait him. There is no right or wrong mm. here. Matter of fact, you're leave, about to set him off again. Stop. Leave, leave your opinions <laughs> in the comments. Out, there are no right or wrong here. Real talk. Leave your opinions in the comments. <laughs> for for I really I really want to know how the general public is receiving this big yeah, show project. I feel like it's kind of mixed for me. I don't I'm see a little it, yeah. bubble because I follow a lot of people that like the project. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I want to hear from people who fucking hated the project. No, absolutely. Honestly. <laughs> and uh, real quick, another quick shout out. Um, a lot of folks keep shouting out TDE. Mm -hmm. TD, oh my god, they always figure it out They always know what they're doing As of recently, part of that is because Dochi has released her project Who? Dochi She's, yeah, she's an actor. She signed on TD. Yeah, she's okay. there Yeah, she's there I bet She's a talent too She's from Florida No, for yeah. sure <laughs> you, should, you should definitely check it out sometime Whenever you get a second For sure You know what I'm saying <laughs> But um, what, I, what I think TD actually does really well is their ability to find artists that actually care about music. Mm -hmm. A lot of labels, a lot of the time, they sign to somebody who got some popping, got some hot that they can attach on and spend money on. But I do think that's something that they do well in. Damn, yeah, TD never does that. Right? Like, like finding the hot artists and like, oh, we're gonna Fuck sign that. you because you're fucking mm -hmm. sizzling. They sign in a person who really came up that. with music, yeah. who has a love for it, and actually wants to take their time to craft something beautiful, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's really what Dochi did on this um project. Oh, uh, you know, the name sounded wild familiar. Let me let me get some. And sure I, I remember cut that. when I was like, Oh, I, I know this name. Oh my yeah. this not was, this song. Nah, 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 nah. There you go. Now, I gotta do it for the casual. I gotta do it for the casual. What is it? What, what it is, is ho? What's up? What's up? This was the shit that I knew. For sure. That That's where you saw that name from, right? When I saw the name, I was like, where's this from? Yes. This was my favorite song of 2023. You love Dochi. I love this song. I love you. You said that in the podcast. You you like to get ready to this song. You did say that. Before the mixes, like two years ago, I had this song repeat, though. Oh, you definitely did. But shout out to Dochi because this was my introduction to her. To her, right. So now, when I hear she got this popping ass album, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, but this is voice. hard though. Yeah. What's up? Every little bow bow. But this is yeah. not on the latest album. This is just a song that introduced me to her. Absolutely. But salute to Doji because she's one of those people that can rap and sing. Man, if I was on that list. What list? You know who else is on uh, that list? Motherfuckers that can rap and sing. You know who else we is on know that list? Tory Lanez. Right. We know Tory Lanez. We know niggas. Continue. Like, continue. This ain't like we know All Tory right. Lanez. Umbrellas. Yeah, purple umbrellas. We know. Salute to Tory. Hate. No, salute to continue. him. Man. He continue. got some cool records out right now too. Shout out to Rodeo Drive. I like that record because right. because Pierre think I got a, a vendetta against that nigga. I don't give a fuck what he's doing. <laughs> Real talk. Salute to everybody involved. But um, you don't want to see a black man free? That's crazy. I always want to see black men free. Absolutely, okay. That's crazy. What? If crazy? they deserve to be you, free, absolutely. You big them up. I got you. You big them up in the shadows. It's never front and side. No, Pierre, we no, not gonna no. do that. I don't, I don't big but continue. Dochi. Speak, speak, speak Dochi. No, no, no. <laughs> Dochi. I think it yes, was. Yes. I didn't listen to the album, so I'm not gonna say it was a phenomenal album because I don't yeah. know. No. I don't know. Reggie, how do you feel about it? I heard it was a great album, so yeah. maybe this will allow me and other people who are casuals like myself mm. to go tap in. Mm -hmm. The theme of this year is tapping in. Okay. <laughs> right. I love that for you, man. It look no, good. No, tapping in look good on you. We're about nine months late, but <laughs> we're going to do it. But we're going to do it still. <laughs> yeah, tap in. I encourage it. I, 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 I heard you tapped into some glizzies. 
I did tap into some glizzies. Hard right. left the How glizzox, nigga. Wait, hold on. You, we got. We gonna get into that. First. We can't. We the, can't step on Dolce like that. Nah, we shout her out. Now nah, 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 get into the glizzy. We barely talked about the album. We're not done talking about that. I'm gonna get to you. I got you. Nah, we not talking about that shit for that long. That ass. No, bro. What are you talking about? Just let us say what we do it for real quick, bro. All we did was shout it out. We didn't even say nothing else. That's all we need. Shout out. Keep pushing. No, maybe for you. For us. Yeah. We wanted to talk about the album. Reggie, tap. Get your shit over real quick. Real quick. It's gonna be quick. Voice too. It's real quick. Go crazy, Reggie. I feel like this is a phenomenal album. My favorite song is Denial. Denial a river and i hate when my favorite song is also like the most popular song but i'm sorry it's the best one i feel like remember when a few weeks ago we had um a topping on the pod where we were like megan lotto mm. or doja cat on a rapping ability how we rank them yeah honestly i don't know if this is a hot take but especially after this album and not in terms of yeah, star okay. power i know she's far less popular right now yeah. but in terms of rapping ability i really feel like Dolce has to be in this conversation i agree with that like no, she's actually hey insane it's like, ironic that her and sis in the same camp this project sounded like the rap control to me like a young woman in her adolescence or in her 20s trying to figure out life whether it be uh managing family getting through her goals so that was super dope uh i got some missy elliott vibes on here some and foxy Fo some foxy Ooh, foxy Jay, brown on there you know what i'm saying but i do want to make this quick shout out and say Vaughn, we out to glizzies <laughs> <laughs> big shout out and you guys i don't know if you guys know this person shout out to jungle pussy Yes. I seen one of those before. Me too. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> that we shit fucking was crazy. crazy. And, that shit, and we tamed it. Okay. <laughs> but big shout out to Jungle Pussy out of Brooklyn. She's been making this style of rap for a while. A long time. Yeah, and I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't mention her while, you know, Dochi's receiving all these flowers because that style, that genre has been around. So big shout out to those ladies. <laughs> Not to say Vaughn, it was uh it was Labor Day weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And we put some up on that grill, man. You had, you had the extendos? Up. Hmm. Fried it up. I did something I haven't done in years, ages. <laughs> I, you know, I'm I'm kind of disappointed in myself. I can't even recognize myself right now. I had three glizzies. Mm. Back, back to back, back with Wait, a bev? No water? Mm. Nah. Condiments? What condiments do you have? Yeah, the mayo. He had the mayo. <laughs> That's a go. You took that shit from me. And Catch the mayo. <laughs> You yeah, had the mayo. The, you use mayo on you your glizzy? You told me you had mayo on the glizzy Are you okay? Before. Are you talking about bro, a mayo on a glizzy? I've heard that from you. You, you told me it was part oh, of the struggle. We're making up lies on the podcast. I don't My think it was Alex. Oh, so, I'm look, about to make up a good lie. You know that I know we doing look, that. Look Say no more. Look how horrified he is. That wasn't him. fuck, mayo? Wait, 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 hold on, Alex. So you haven't yeah. enjoyed uh, glizzock in like years? <laughs> it's been five years. Really? Yeah. You, wait, that's you, a long time to stay away from. When that shit hit your throat, how I feel? <laughs> it didn't. I, We're going a okay, little motherfucker. Off the rails. Wait, you throated it? I, I ain't going front, y'all. Whoa. That's why us men need to grow up. Every dude that was there, we threw someone on the grill, right? All the dudes ate it in the corner in the dark. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have to do that with bananas too? No, nah, nah, you peel nah. it. Bananas, I just, I just break it off real quick. Wait, do do you cut your glizzy before you eat it? Who cuts it? Wait, Savon, I haven't like... had. You would have more glizzy experience because I've taken some years off. Okay. So let me know, like, how you approach your glizzy. Like, how does that work? For the you? way that we do it, me and you, right? No, <laughs> not me and you, just you. No, you never. You just did it over the weekend. All I had was ketchup and mash, and I ate in the corner in darkness. No relish. <laughs> Hell no. Y'all like that no shit? No cheese? Nah, really yeah. disgusting. Bro, bro you fuck? put no, you put pepper on your pizza. That's crazier. How's that? Brown pepper? Yeah, Gr like black pepper? That's yeah. worse. That's, yeah. yeah. that's, that's not wild. Yeah. Black that's mad pepper? regular. Where you been at? Wait, wait, wait. Black what? pepper. Wait, please. Somebody. Yes. Nah, they're bugging. Black pepper on pizza Negative. is more regular. Than mm. relish on a glizzy. I, I don't know what's more regular, but they're both regular. Black pepper okay. is right. like the most regular, regular. condiment. No, salt not. and pepper is the most regular salt condiment for anything. You never though. been to the pizza, pizza parlor and they had salt the, and pepper the salt on a, and pepper on a slice? slice? Nah. Pepper salt and pepper, pepper on, on a slice. I don't do that. I don't do that, but I don't, I don't look at him weird for doing if that. You don't like, wait, wait. It's what? garlic and parmesan, Facts. oregano, nah. and red pepper flakes. I don't think y'all been eating pizza, y'all. I think y'all been going somewhere else for years. Okay, I want to say all that, Alex. Y'all never went into a pizza parlor and saw the salt shaker and the pepper? Next yeah, to each other on the, on the you pizza know, You know what I did when I saw it? No. I ignored it. <laughs> but and I, I got to see if it's there. The garlic. You can use it. The, gar, bro, <laughs> the fuck are we talking about? Nah. What that's are not talking about? Relish is mad regular on the glizzy. On the glizzy. For y'all. You nah, got like, some glizzy nah, warriors. Like relish. Salute. <laughs> Nigga, you just ketchup. down three in a row. Wait, ketchup. Not no that bum-ass relish. Ew. What the fuck? Why y'all eating that? What is that? Relish is... 
It's pickled, you know. Ah, also, it's disgusting. Your people, mouth goes stick people, like, I'm, I'm very fine right now because you know I like to <sighs> eat all the condiments. I want better for y'all, yo. I know I'm gonna be alone on this, but any sauerkraut lovers in the oh, house? Another one. No, I'm with crickets. You. Hell oh, no, because sauerkraut, God. guys. Oh, so y'all you are have to, You have to eat the sauerkraut because it has a ton of probiotics. Ah, I'm with you. And it helps with digestion. You guys are glizzy professionals. I, like, I don't know about all of this shit. I, like I just love condiments. You put you, you put like, your meat on the grill, Alex? Hell yeah, we hey, put my yo. meat on. Yeah, yeah, we put the meat on the grill. You put your meat. You hell, said, you know what, motherfucking dude? Who else gonna put my meat on the grill, man? All right, copy. I just wanted to. I just wanted <laughs> to make know, sure. You know, we threw someone that grilled this past weekend, man. I, they, they, I heard the men not cooking no more. I like, I like, <laughs> I like the glizzies diverse. For real. Oh, please do so tell. I love a good chicken sausage, you know? A little mm. chicken sausage, a little sauerkraut, a little um, mm. mustard, mayo, cheese. It's too much. Um, mayo, see, too it was much. him, Pierre. I did, I did barbecue sauce on a glizzy before, too. Like, you really, oh, you can really just, freak a just, glizzy, man. You just experiment. That's like, the problem. I just feel like this is not that wild. Like, somebody putting barbecue sauce on a glizzy is not that wild. It's nah. just a fucking condiment. Like, why are we put, like, Ugh. He said he put turkey on the glizzy. That's that's wild. You, oh, that was you, a little gluttonous. It was a little gluttonous. You glass. put a cold cut on, on Nigga, a nigga wrapping it. You got to grill, grill the turkey, throw it on a wrap, glizzy nah. off the grill. Save on. It's That's listeria. Gluttony. That is gluttony. You ain't hear about boys heading them. It's listeria out there Fresh. right now. You better stop. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know mm -hmm. how'd you feel when it, the glizzy like went down your esophagus, esophagus and shit. I ain't gonna lie. I did a little prayer. Before or after? How well, the hood niggas after. look at you? Because I know nah, he was at they a hood. Was there with I knew he was at a hood party when you they, had the glizzy. Nah, I know that had to hurt your soul. Nah, to nah, eat nah. a glizzy in front of the hood it, niggas. It felt good because we all did Everybody. it in unison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish you guys could just live in your yeah. truth because uh, because yeah. they're so like but glizzies are so good. Real talk, I'm gonna be honest though. Because I don't think I told this story. I probably did. The real reason Ooh. why I stopped eating glizzies is because I saw the video of how they were manufactured and made, and I'm about to go watch that video again. So I never make that mistake. I made this Labor Day weekend. That was what fucked me up. I ain't gonna lie, but the, the, the way that Hebrews National was smelling, <laughs> the way it was smelling this past this past Saturday, I was like, Nah, I, I take mm. I take the smell of, of a burger being cooked over a glizzy being cooked. Any day. Yeah, when week. the last time you ate one? The last time I had a hot dog, a glizzy. <sighs> last it had to have been years ago. Really? Wow. I, I hate not. yo. You I hate lying. yo. Nah, right nah, wait, wait, real quick, before you even go, bro. There's two things that I hate. I hate people who swear they're above eating hot dogs. I never said and that. I, well, no, no, no. Listen, you just <laughs> and I hate people that act like they can't eat McDonald's, bro. Like nah, McDonald's and Glizzy's, bro. Like. That shit makes the world go round. I will implore y'all to stop eating McDonald's. <laughs> Can I just? Please. I'm sorry. Stop I, need this, I need this moment. I need this ISO. <clears throat> so if you just rewind 10 seconds, we heard what Savon said. On April 13th, 2019, I, I tweeted, I dislike when people think they're too good for hot dogs. <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. Like, I can't stand people that think they're so better serious. than eating a motherfucking glizzock. Did you see the video of how they made put that the shit? Put glizzock in your mouth. You see? You what see? are you talking about? Nah, you can put it in there. What are you talking like, about? Eat the glizzock, nigga. Nah, you can eat it. That's the thing, though. You gotta, Be an eater. You got to see how they make the glizz first. It don't matter how it get nah, made. You got to make, Yo, it, you make it yourself. All the shit you eat and you want to bust a nut in a girl mouth, mm -hmm. they don't care. Wait, who is they? What? Where is this God, conversation the going? going who is they? <laughs> they they it. Who? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm yo, lost. Yeah. They let it off. You can let it off, and they be like, yum, 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 yum. And they I don't give a fuck. Okay, nah, and then how does that something. relate to the glizzies? Please. Because the same way that the glizzies okay. made is the same way that cum is made. You put it in your body, nobody give a fuck, you still eat it. <laughs> People be lying about... All the shit they put in their body that go into other people. The same thing as a hot dog. You don't know what goes in the hot dog and it goes no, into other people. My head hurts. That's all I'm saying, bro. We're gonna watch the video after we done recording. I know there's mad people that just be out here catching one night stands. Like, oh my god, come in my mouth. Like, nah, they, they do be that. wilding and you don't know what that man had for breakfast. Nah, but they 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 said they could tell. You don't know what grade he smoked that day before nah, he let a what? load off in your nah. mouth. One like, girl, one girl, like, mm, you had some pears earlier. That shit happened to me. I'm dead ass. Did you um, have pears? Or, yes. <laughs> he or, said yes. I'm like, damn. <sighs> yeah. That shit happened to me. I'm dead ass. Let me chill. You pears? right? It was pears. I did ass had some pears that day. That was very specific. That's why I was like, wait, what the fuck? How you know? Nah, it, if, that girl was good. On, she got some good on, taste buds. Depending on what you eat, if you eat more uh, sweet fruits or sweet uh -huh. drink more sweet drinks, it, it from what sweeter? I, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying uh -huh. is nobody is asking of that. You just letting it happen and then retroactively like, yum, 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 yum. Nah. What is this? 
right? It's just like a hot dog. You just go eat the shit and then figure it out when it affects your body. It's like White Castle. All right, maybe let me like take it off a nut and come and Please. come. To, Wait, what? Like it's White Castle. You don't know what the fuck is in that White Castle. All you know is when you put it in your body, you got a shit. <laughs> it's an instant laxative. That's what White like, Castle that's is. We don't be knowing half the shit we put in our body. So when y'all niggas get on this, oh, I'm a glizzy warrior or I'm a glizzy you being are. glizzies. Y'all know how to dress we, it up. We are. Y'all, yeah, get it. You go, ate three, go get a membership. No bev. Nah, I had mad bev. To the head. Y'all niggas dressed that shit up with ketchup, mustard, sour cream. Sour cream. I let the sour cream like ketchup on my shit. Got out of there. Everything <laughs> that Alex just said is mad regular. And he's like, look at you guys. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. we just put ketchup and mustard on our hot dogs. The <laughs> relish, sour cream. Salute to y'all, man. Sometimes you do gotta freak the glizzy, though. You see that? See that? And different regions have different hot dogs. Like, there's a Seattle dog. They put cream cheese on it. And see, you don't, you huh? don't see... You don't Damn. see me you fucking a glizzy connoisseur, uh, Reggie. No, what I'm the just, fuck? No, I don't. Know, but I'm just a foodie, and I like learning about other people's foods. And don't yeah. shame them, like somebody on this fucking pod. I'm shaming crazy. You right, and you I usually what? don't shame. Next time I eat eight glizzy in one sitting, I'm a foodie. <laughs> Record it and send it to the group so we, we can foodies, verify. All right, yeah. a woman is always gonna give you an out. <laughs> I'm a foodie. <laughs> I ain't no glizzy warrior, motherfucker. I'm a foodie. I like my food. Nah, you a glizzy warrior. I'm man. being hypocritical right now because I can't remember the last time I ate a hot dog. See, but... welcome, Reggie. Oh, same here, Reggie. No, why I, is that? no, no, no. But no, it's not for. It's not because I fucking care about my health. Oh, okay. it's because I'm just not around them a lot. And when I'm at a barbecue, I pick the burger instead. But at the mm, same, in the same breath, you don't see me shaming people for liking hot dogs like you're doing right now. I so. ain't shaming them. I ate them in the. I ate them. You were like, you guys put ketchup and mustard yeah, and relish. Yeah, but that's not shame because I ate a glizzy just like them. It's more like, damn, y'all, y'all can handle all of that. <laughs> like, word. It's my stomach can't even handle all of that no, together. Sour cream is good that. for your stomach. Really? How I, long? How the acidity long is in the my av- stomach is different. How long is the average glizzy? <laughs> huh? How long is the average glizzy? I don't know. Seven, eight inches. And you ate three of those shits. <laughs> That's whole wild. world. That's crazy. That's nigga, you talking about you want to eat eight soon. <laughs> nigga, that's mad <laughs> inches. What's up with you, gay? Nah, yo, bro, you can't it's shame me in the glizzy. Eight, it's 56. You can't shame. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Six wait, inches with glizzy. <laughs> yo, was that correct? Did you? Wait, no funny. Did y'all Ooh. see the nigga that ate? Uh, I think it was 83 glizzies in 10 minutes. Kobayashi. Nah, it wasn't Why? Kobayashi. What was his name? It wasn't it was Kobayashi. Kobayashi. Glizzy connoisseur. Nah. I'm trying to tell y'all these niggas. Kobayashi got that defeated. That was getting connoisseur. I'm trying to tell y'all. He got oh, defeated. You mean Joey Chestnut? It was Joey, Joey Chestnut. Is that his real government name? There's yeah, no, no it is. I like him. Actually, I don't know if it's his government name, but he uses it. Nah, it gotta be. You can't switch your name to nah. Chestnut eating glizzy. He it ate vegan be. dogs this year. He ate vegan dogs. Oh, he ate vegan? Yeah. Does that count? That's what was the whole dispute was. That's kind of like a strap on. Yo. We got to get your brain <laughs> tested. This nigga might have CT. We all need to go home and take a nap. I go lie. This nigga, we'll this, be right back, guys. This, well, all right. this nigga might have CT. Nah, for real though. Wait. If you ate 83 vegan, vegan glizzies, that's like sucking like plastic dick, bro. That's not the real thing. Or maybe it cancels Yo. each other out. You know, like PEMDAS. It's it like 83... It for every four vegan glizzies is one real glizzock? I don't know. <laughs> y'all are sick. All right, so I'm glad, I'm, I, I'm glad we're doing kind of math, right? So, yo. Oh, my God. I was, um, all right, everybody strap in, right? So, hey, hey yo. yo. Sorry. No pun intended. Um, I was uh, surfing online, and I came across an article that said, apparently ATL is uh, the, the most educated ranked city. Atlanta. Uh, uh, yeah, Atlanta, wow. same thing. Um, it's, it's the most educated city. And I looked on the list, they got a list of 10, and New York, New Jersey, and the tri-state area is nowhere to be found in the first 10. So my mind went to, oh, shoot, maybe that just means we're more street Damn. smart. Right? Or are we dumb? So we got Alex, Reggie, and Savon. You guys are all here mm-hmm. representing your, your states. Mm-hmm. Alex, and Re- Alex and Savon are from New York, same, same here. Mm-hmm. And Reggie's from Jersey, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you guys look, um, you know, kind of next to you, I bought you guys some uh, dry erase boards. The reason why that is, is because I wanted to see how smart you guys are, right? Since uh, New York or tri- the tri-state, people in the tri-state area apparently didn't make this list, right? Here, I'm Asian. So I want Word. you guys... That's a, yo, you fucked this up. I'm right an there. advantage. Reggie! This is crazy. It's just in my blood, you know? <laughs> you set me up. Yeah, she about right. to smoke us. So this first one, right? Watch I come in the fucking last. <laughs> Alex, you're going to go first. Then I'll go to Reggie and then save on. Wait, and I thought I'll, it was I'll, we, don't all, we don't all get, get the asked same. the same question. All right, let's do that then. That's bias. All right, first word to spell, right? Oh, oh wait. Hold first up. word to spell. You, you, you guys even, have 10 seconds to spell it. You didn't let us warm up. You ain't even explain the rules to the game. No, 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 no,
And you have 10 seconds to write it, right? Oh, First word, Dominican. Oh, <laughs> nigga, what? I can spell Nine. that shit backwards. You got five seconds. And I'm signing it. All right, you know it, how we do. Let me see the word right next to you. For those of every, everyone who's listening, save on your handwriting is atrocious. Uh, you spelled it right. <laughs> I spelled it correct, right. though. I see your handwriting. Everybody else. spelled it right. Oh, my God. This is bad. <laughs> Yo, you write like you eat glizzies. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Look at it. Nah, it's hard. What the fuck does that mean? Nah, you good. Yo. Alright, next word. What the fuck? We're already like. But we all spelled it. And I look, all I had to right. sign it because you know what? Gang. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, next word. Uh marijuana. You gotta hold up. Hold up. I don't smoke. Mm. So you gotta give me some time, bro. This better get harder, <laughs> pause. It hey, better get harder. Trust me, I got you. <laughs> nah, Wait, coming off the glizzies is crazy. Talking about better get harder. You ready, hold Alex? Up. Nah, hold yeah. up, hold okay. up. Nah, fuck. I, nah, Alex, hey. you spelled it right. I'm going too early, my fault. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm signing everything. Uh, Reggie, tilt yours down a little bit. All right, Reggie, you spelled it right. Nope. Uh, uh, Reggie, you spelled it wrong. Maraju. Mara. It's M M A R M A R I. Yep, that's what I did. M A R I. Damn, you, see, you, see, you see the dot. That's, that's the what I, I. That's Don't what I did. That. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. She never stole it. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 No smoke us on this next one. Okay. Your right. handwriting is so cute, Alex. I can't get over it. <laughs> yeah, I had like pen and shit class back next, in the day. I knew it. My next mother did that when I was like, okay, so I'm down. What one. the fuck? You keep correlating <laughs> glizzies and handwriting. Are you okay today? Next word <laughs> fuck. is consciousness. Oh. Hold up, hold up. Oh, I'm about to smoke y'all niggas. <laughs> I yeah, love this Reg. Shit. Go crazy, Reg. Oh, fuck, I forgot to smell. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Whoever's done. Oh, wait, hold up. Whoever's done. <laughs> yo, you got, you got, you got, you got five seconds. Why you fucking us up you got over five here, seconds. Right? Four, three, wait, two, no, one. Fuck, I right, put it wrong. Put it right. I can can it we wrong. spell it? I know I spelled it right, but my handwriting is really fucking Fuck, nasty. spelled it wrong. So can we spell it? Go ahead. And spell, tell, it, spell tell it us if right. we wrong. Okay, go ahead. Spell it. Spell yours, uh, Savon. Oh, wait, hold up. I didn't want to go first. Nah, go ahead. C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. Okay, Reggie. Oh, no, I'm fuck. not. Reggie, 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 I ain't finished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cheer. smoked that shit. <laughs> I smoked that shit. I, I ain't finished it. I ain't put the nest. I just put conscious. Seriously. <laughs> I just put conscious. <laughs> oh, fuck. I Yo, said, because I know there's two different types of. Oh, well, it's bonus really point. Not. Can I redeem myself? What is the difference between the two consciences? Conscious and conscious. Nah, don't do that. This ain't the game. Hold he don't up. know. <laughs> he don't that. know. Don't do that. All right, next word cologne. But wait, hold up. Go ahead. I was right? Yeah, yeah. All right. We saw Savon is in the lead. Hold yep. on. Cologne. Hold up. I like I can't read, but I can write. <laughs> <laughs> and you're yeah, you need to talk while we're like I doing got you, I got you. All right. like, All while right. we thinking, you gotta like speak. For, uh, forget that. I'm gonna I'm change the cologne. Not cologne. The next word is phlegm. Okay. Phlegm. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> I'll give you a hint. There's a silent letter in it. This Savon, is, you look puzzled. This is not a real word. Yes, it is. You don't know what you phlegm can find is? You in the dictionary? You ever been sick? Alex probably has a lot of phlegm right now because yeah, he's, he's kind of uh, under the weather. Five, four, nah, I ain't three, show my <laughs> two, I got some letters two, on one. here that may not All right, everybody even. turn around at the guess. same time. Turn around I'll at the same time. i put a fucking F, my dumb ass. <laughs> no, you might be right. Nah, that's the way you spell it. It's with a P. It's definitely with a P. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Alex, mm. Alex, wait, wait, wait. Save you, one. you spelled it P-H-L-E-M-E. That's like clean. Uh, Alex, what'd you write? <laughs> F, F, F L E Y M. Turn it around. Let me see. Pause. Pardon yeah. the left. All right, Reggie. Reggie, Reggie, did you just cheat? No, no, no. You could, you could run okay. it back. Reggie's P the only one that got it right. P H L E G M. There's always a time for a comeback, baby. Hello. <laughs> um. All right. Last one. Right. This is for all the marbles. Whoever gets this wins the whole thing. That's oh, bullshit. Because I'm gonna leave. Uh, <laughs> no, me and Savon are tied because we both were the only ones like to get one right. This next word is homogeneous. Oh, I'm looking at you. What you mean? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I got something for you. I got something for you. Wait, homo homogeneous. Oh, yeah. Homogeneous. Oh, homogeneous. Yeah. Thank you. Wait, if it's you can't say tomato, the word, tomato, tomato. No, no, it's not. no it's those not. are two different if, things. If She's you right. can't say She's the right. word, homogenous. I don't have to spell the word. It's right, definitely homogenous. homogenous. Whatever. If right. we being honest, and and your gang collectively, <laughs> nah, I spelled it already. I'm good. What about you? Nah, <laughs> collectively. <laughs> you over there, wasting time. Like, wasting time. Write your little word, nigga. Yo, he trying to look 
get my board. That, that's that's it. Hold yeah, up. You got five she seconds. You said more than ten Homo? seconds. Homogenous. Homogenous. Oh. Two, one. We should have let her right, think turn it your was words around. Turn yours around. Okay. Hey, Alex, spell it out. H O M O G E N O U S. Homogenous? G E N what? G E N O U S? Wrong. Ah, oh, fuck. <gasps> Reggie, go ahead. Nah, uh, go ahead, Reg. We got the same spell. Stop cheating. I see you over there. <laughs> We can see you, bro. bro <laughs> Wait, I spelled it the same as that. Spell it out, Reggie. Same one. H O M O G E N O U S. Homogenous. Say one. Go ahead. I spelled it like my gang the, did. Like, like, no, you did. Bro. Bro. Yo, while we come were on, spelling we're spelling it out. He's over here erasing shit. We want to hear it. Go ahead, say one. H O M O G E N O U S. I swear, that's how I spelled it. Oh shit, that's how I spelled it. But twice though. No, yeah, that's your fault because you ain't say it correctly. The correct spelling is H O M O G E N E O U S. Ah, uh, uh, genus, genus. So nobody won. Nobody won. Ah, that's not true. We can have a tiebreaker. You want one more? Think, nah, think, of, a, think of a no, good no, no. word. No, I got, no, no. Wait, hold up. I got a tiebreaker for no, you. No, no, no. Can we do a non spelling one? What do okay. You mean? Just like okay. a non spelling question. Okay. She, she if this is too hard for you, you, if this is too hard for you guys, let me know. Before it's, we it's end this game, based. okay, yeah. okay. This is, this is a tiebreaker. Let's do science. Let's do Before science. we end this game, okay. Pierre, well, after we end this round, mm -hmm. yeah. I want Pierre to spell a word. And then <laughs> I'll good? determine if we win or if he wins. Yeah, we're going to see. Ooh. I got us, game. Yeah, yeah. we're going to see. But All keep right. going. That's like this a deal or no deal. This is science based. I, I, Fuck. Again, I doubt any of you will take it, will understand or know the answer. But That was condescending. That's racist. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> Watch this. Because he, he says he's a science buff. <laughs> so everybody knows what. DNA is right. It's an acronym, right? Fuck. Do you know what the letters stand for in the acronym DNA? Oh my god, I used to know this shit. This is off the top of my head. I'm such a fucking dumbass. You got five seconds. She said five seconds. I get more time than that. Deal or no deal, nigga. Two. Give me an extra. You stalling, eight. bro? Give me an extra eight. Seven. What are you talking six, about? Six. Uh huh. Five. You said DNA. Four. Fuck. Three, I used to know this shit. I got two. Nothing. You ain't gotta lie, Alex. No, I'm dead One, ass, bro. Nigga, I'm not zero. dumb. Zero. All right, go ahead. Reggie, you look like you're working over there. You wanna, Reggie? This is for the gang. It's not just for you. Okay, well, I do as all women do. I try to distract you. <laughs> I wrote it in a cute way. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie put a heart in the D and dressed up the A. I like so, that. I like so that. I win. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. That sounds no way. familiar. That's what I'm trying to say. We all learned that. He trying to say, yeah. But the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Come on now. Oh. And if you need the nucleus for the cell to exist. Period. Oh. And if you ain't got the nucleus, the DNA don't even matter, nigga. Fuck out of here. <laughs> we just keep saying shit. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> nigga said, so that's uh -huh. how you maintain homeostasis. <laughs> yeah. Y'all niggas is funny. And that's how we say homogenous. 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 Through homostasis. Homo 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 yo, hey, yo, Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nigga that asked me about a homogenous can't ask me nothing. <laughs> but spell restaurant. R-E-S-T-A-U-R-E-N-T. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How to, how, to, how to end? This has been the Need to Know podcast. <laughs> <laughs> how does it end? Say it again. Say it again. I don't have a pen on me. Say it again. Say it again. Restaurant. Spell it. I don't have a pen on me. You said R-E-S. Yeah. Uh -huh. R-E-S-T-A-U-R-E-N-T. <laughs> I don't have a pen on me. Yo, you spell restaurant. <laughs> restaurant. Get up. So we win. 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 Oh, my fault. My fault. My fault. We don't know how to spell, but I'm the smartest one here. Moral of the story is that word been fucking me up since I was in second grade. Told me. And I knew I knew it was gonna come to help me one day. I didn't have a pen. For me, what fucks me up, even as a journalist, I literally write for a living. I cannot spell necessary. Yo, that should be kicking my ass. Two S's. It's two both. That used to be me and conscious and no, conscious. Might be one C. I think it's N E F Yo, N E C. You guys have any words that you struggle saying? I just gave it to you. Um fuck. <laughs> say yeah. it. Wait, say it, Savon. Oh, saying? Yeah, saying. Oh no, not a restaurant. No, you I want, can say it. I, can I can't you, spell it. You want me to give you mine? Sure. Uh rural. Rural. <laughs> rural. 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 I, I have some. Oh my god, remember. please don't laugh at me. But I don't know before I say it, I get all flustered because I don't know it's I don't know if it's Biopic or biopic, and I get really shy. <laughs> <laughs> is it steak? Is it steak frites? Uh, <laughs> what? That was so red. Is that is that uh, is that really ste just steak and fries? That was so red. <laughs> Which one is it? I think that's all you said. <laughs> is that what you said? 
is a steak fry. It's another word I oh, struggle with. I got one that be fucking me up. Uh-huh. And I've tried to say it on this podcast since like the inception of this podcast. And I won't ever say it again. Ooh, I just got my go. <laughs> Trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was correct, right? No, no, no. But I had to think about it. Think In the flow of a conversation, I can't say trajectory. Trajectory. <laughs> say it now. Trajectory. All right, you, you, Yo, you ever want to say it, but then you know you're gonna fuck it up, so you just try to like divert yeah, the conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. so you, that you don't have to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got fucked up word. What's yours? You know it. I know it. Compartmentalize. <laughs> oh yeah. You said that. You, shit. you, you just in my ass. You just though. said it though. <laughs> That's yeah. Right now. No, you just said that shit perfectly. I know, but before that compartment, <laughs> we gotta mentally yeah. prepare we have before to prepare these for words. It. Yeah. Like I be because you gotta think. No we talk about artists. We talk mm-hmm. about potential. We talk about trends. So the word trajectory comes up often. Yeah. But when I'm in my bag that and we on the pod, it's hard. That I have a. That Yo, was out of pocket too soon. Yo, <laughs> this has been the Yo. lovely need to know Yo, podcast. Bro. All right, y'all. What is wrong with what you? What you need on. to know and when you need to know. <laughs> Yo, wait, hold Yo. up. Okay. <laughs> God, uh, God, it? God forgive Saban. Um, do we have anything? Do we have time? Please. We don't got no more time. We always yeah, got, we got time. time. What's up? You want to talk about 50? We can talk about that. Where? What y'all want to talk with? You want to go? 50 sat down with Gillian Wallow, Million Dollars Worth of Game, mm-hmm. and they spoke about a conversation that's kind of been trending on the internet for a few weeks now. I don't know where it was originated from, but it's centered around uh, is, is a million dollars a lot of money, or is it life changing money? Hmm. We don't got to stay here nah, we too don't. long. Nah. But anybody that says a million dollars isn't life changing money is just privilege, out of touch, and got a little bit too much money. And he said that because context within the interview, <clears throat> the per- he was talking about Fifty Cent was talking about his one million dollar Shady Records deal, and then he recalled, "Yo, everyone's happened for me, but the one person that said that that was not not that much money was Dame Dash." Mm. And Dame Dash reasoning was this is from him. Fifty. He was like, "Yo, after you get your watch, your car, you 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 break some off for the homies." That's one million dollars is nothing, and mm. then Fifty Cent still remembers that to this day mm. because it affected him. He could Dame could use a million right now, right? Yeah, Fifty wound up saying, "And look at this the position <laughs> yeah. that Dame's nah, in." Nah, I heard he got some shit to pay. Like a million would really hit right now. Mm-hmm. But to say Vaughn's point, you're right, man. Like, and I think the key there is life changing. Yeah, <clears throat> man, a thousand dollars can change someone's life For depending sure. on how bad they are. Yeah. Right? A million dollars, even if it's taxed, even if you're in a different state. You can take that amount of money and do something substantial with it. Absolutely. That is a fact. The way that I like to look at questions like this is what if the question was posed to you on the opposite end of the spectrum? Mm -hmm. So if somebody were to say, hey, if I took a million dollars from you, how life changing would that be for you? I'd be in the negatives. You get what I'm saying? I would be in the negative for years. <laughs> if somebody yeah. said, we love nigga. honesty on this I'm going to draw your, your bank account what? $1 million what? from where it stands today. No bills getting paid. Tough. I'm going to call Alex and beg him. <laughs> hey, yo, hey. You got something? <laughs> can I please? Yo, you can hold me down. You need to know business account. <laughs> I don't like, know how I would recover from that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So like, when when we have these conversations and they, they are in jest, and again, I know we like to reference other podcasts on here, specifically the Joe Budden podcast. Again, because of our affiliation with them and, mm. and being uh, friends with those guys over there, like a lot of that shit comes across our timeline. So a lot oh, of the yeah, things we kind of reference, like I, I know they spoke about this too. Even Sorry, I don't know man. if it happened before Fifty came up, but All whatever right. the time it was, they spoke about a million dollars changing your life. And I know Ish. And I just ran into Ish, and I wish I would have thought about this while I was inebriated. (laughs) But I would have looked Ish in his face and said, you, my light-skinned brother, OG, are crazy. you have made way (laughs) too much money in your life to look anybody in the face and say, one million dollars is not life-changing. Now, does that mean it's going to change the entirety of your life? No. I could win a million dollars, I could earn a million dollars, I could be gifted a million dollars and get shot in 30 days. But you know what happened within that 30 days that oh, I got that million dollars? <laughs> it, changed, it changed my motherfucking life. Oh, I went up with that million. Now, if I had that million and I didn't know what to do with it for the entirety of my life, maybe it didn't necessarily change my life in its entirety. But for that moment, oh, it changed. Ninety-seven percent of this world, yes. if they were gifted one million dollars, whether it be in this country or any other country, one million dollars is certainly life-changing. Yes, 
And I don't know the perspective that he was kind of speaking from or speaking to. Yeah. But I do want to make sure everybody's a little bit more grounded when we're thinking about the world and what a million dollars can do for one individual, especially one that may not come from wealth or money. They say the, the first one is the hardest, right? So how could that not be fucking life changing, yeah. man? Come on. Mm. Now. And then you got to figure out a way to flip it or make it work for itself. Absolutely. Yeah. And to, I, I yeah. think I, I think people try to frame that question with uh, just the United States of America, capitalism. Mm -hmm. I speak about it here frequently, right? Just if you live in certain states and what your taxes might look like if you're living in Texas as opposed to New York, that million dollars looks differently. And I, I get it. Most people are accustomed to having money. So to them, it's, like, oh, it's just another million. But in actuality, that is a million dollars. If and, you use it right, yeah. Yes. And also in the grand scheme of the world, a million dollars is nothing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, because money right? is nothing. We, and, that's and, something we created. And, and not even speaking to that point, but what you're saying is true. Yeah. But what I'm saying is in the grand scheme of the world, right? Like, y'all know, I love underdog fantasy. I love FanDuel. <laughs> This is something that I do as my leisure, as fun, whatever. Football season is Ooh, approaching. Yes. I cannot wait. I got all my fantasy teams Excited. drafted. Shout out to anybody who's participating hey. in fantasy football. But what I will say to that is I may bet a few hundred dollars on one bet. Mm. To some people, they're like, wait, you betting five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on one bet? That's a lot of money to, you know, to mm. someone else. Mm -hmm. Whereas to me, it may be a little bit more subjective. It may be a little bit more affordable based on my financial circumstance. The same thing goes for a $1 million threshold. For sure. $1 million to Jay-Z, $1 million to Warren Buffett, $1 million to Jerry Jones, $1 million to Floyd Mayweather, $1 million to all of these celebrities, to Drake, whoever you want to like equate it to, $1 million is not that much money to them. But to the masses, to most people that live on this earth, $1 million will certainly change their life. And we don't know how $1 million cash, liquid, can affect most people. But even if some of your favorite rappers and entertainers, if they lost a million dollars, they would be out on the road. They would be doing movies. They would be putting albums. They got to compensate for that because $1 million is still a lot of money regardless of what your circumstances is, unless you are in that one, two, three, four, five percent of the world. Give Damon a million, watch. <laughs> I mean, it seems like a lot now. He'll clear some shit up, right, Reggie? He'll clear some shit up right now with that, right? You want to know what's funny about that hmm. 50 Cent interview when he brought up Dame Dash? I remember when I was younger, and I don't remember what program it was, but I do remember Dame Dash saying he doesn't wear the same T-shirt twice. <laughs> and it stuck to me when I was a kid. Yeah, because I used to watch all that programming. I was I was a MTV, VH1, BET, Fuse TV baby. Same, same, same here, right? Same. Like before YouTube, heavy. I used to watch the Real World. Heavy. Yeah. heavy I'm sorry. Heavy. I love CT. That was our first. Reality. I love these guys. That was our reality <laughs> like, TV. Yeah. I was in my bag. For I sure. know you guys have Love Island. Real I World. I know you guys rules. have Love Is Blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Savon Slater. I grew up on. The real world. Yeah. Did yeah. you watch the challenge then? Oh, I sure. love the yeah. challenge. I, I used to think Johnny I was going to the challenge. Wait, I feel like I've said that on the show and people like didn't know what I was talking about. Who was people? I don't I'm, know. I feel you? like I could have sworn. Anyway. Don't I'm, be racist. I'm very good. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm Asian. I'm, no, I'm like, Asian. <laughs> 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 no, I could have sworn because I just wanted people to love the challenge so bad. So I, I'm happy you love show. it. No, yeah. like I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, like I'm challenge alumni. Like I used to think my life goal was to get on that TV show. We could still do it, Save On. Technically, yeah. I think they're looking for people like us. You that's know? why I came to podcast. What? Just because to get I on that? Make it on the road. What? I think. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me and next. Oh, you was, are you oh sure to get on that? I can see you. I was trying to get on that. I was Yo. trying to get on that. You guys remember like Room Raiders? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah, the yeah. black light and all that. Black yeah. light. Yeah, Pin My Rod, all of that. Pin My Rod. There's a new Pin My Rod out on Netflix. It's not Pin My Rod. Yeah, I saw that. Does it have an exhibit? It doesn't no, have no, exhibits. No. Well, uh, it's this other actor. Fuck, I'm getting do a second. It's really good, though. Do they put a swimming pool in your trunk? <laughs> they do wild shit still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the fish tank in the rims? They do wild shit like that still. I ain't gonna okay, lie. Okay, they do yeah. the orgies in the back seat. No orgies this time. That was not. <laughs> this nigga is horny today. <laughs> You're thinking about the wrong this, show. This nigga is horny. Wrong show. <laughs> you know? But I remember the time where yeah. Dame Dash looked in the camera and I thought this was mm. a goal. Mm. I thought it was a flex. He was like, I remember yeah, that man, you know, I never get, I, I never wear the same white t-shirt twice. 
I never wore the same Air Force Air Force once twice. Like I and remember it, him saying those things. Yeah. And now going, oh my God, I love this podcast because things just are so fucking full circle. <laughs> yeah. Channing Tatum just said something recently about how White Goat. He didn't do laundry <laughs> <laughs> because he was like, hey, I don't want to do laundry on my clothes. So yeah. the white t shirt that I buy, I'm just gonna That's throw it. it out after I use it. Yeah. Sean Evans, you're back at number one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that comment that he said. Yeah. So I, I remember a time where yeah. Dame Dash was very fluid with his money. And it makes you think about all the money we go save when we get some more there are people that really only wear an outfit one time that's crazy don't get me wrong though. has there been an occurrence where i've done that before i'm sure we've all done it like we yeah. specifically bought an uh, outfit for this thing and then we never found another opportunity to especially use it again. me with my birthday dresses damn for sure work. <laughs> but like they will literally buy something else I just feel like also the target audience and just society has changed so much because back in the day when people used to say shit like that, like, oh, I only wear my Air Forces once, then I throw them out and get a new pair. When you said that back in the day, that shit was fly. It was funny. Like, I wanted to do that. But yeah. then now if you say that shit today, I feel like people don't receive that well. They're like, what? Like, yeah. that shit is not, it's not fly smart. anymore. Like, and it's not yeah. smart. Well, a lot, of, <laughs> the celeb- a a lot of the rappers and celebrities move like that. Once they take a picture in it, they can't be spotted again in it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's Rewear. financially responsible that's to some crazy. degree. Rewear your clothes. People. That's crazy. Yeah, wear some clothes, y'all. Keep wearing it. I, I think we might have to rename the podcast the. Nah, that's a sick ass name. Nah, I told you, say, Tony. No, I was gonna down. say the In Touch Podcast. Get that. Get that shit the fuck up. I'm, not, touch, I'm not touching anything. That's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> crazy. The in Touch. But I do think we tie like <laughs> because I can't tell anybody like that's responsible. Yeah. Of age. Hey, don't wear the same underwear twice. Oh, but you can't. You... <laughs> that's your messaging. It's been a need to know five. No, nah, that's your messaging. I think You're all right. of us got different messaging. That's, on that's my messaging. That's your messaging. Trojan need, the Trojan need to give me a bag. And my I support messaging. you. They did give you a bag. They, did, they gave us a little bag. We need some help. Look what we, we do. Really yes, yeah, yeah, we yeah. all got a bag. Yeah, we so did, we're all fucking doing it. Yeah, yeah. Guys, we're all doing it. We're, <laughs> we're all fucking and my messaging it. is is be in a loving relationship and have that's sex L. that's, no, L, we right. doing that's that. the way to go <laughs> that's fire right there for right? sure that's fire right there. for I sure like I that. think we all doing that real yeah, quick before yeah. we get up out of here mm-hmm. I do want to ask y'all a question oh. ask my friends buckle and up it, it, no you don't gotta buckle up anything <laughs> I just want to know because there's certain people when I see them on the interview oh, fuck, or when I hear their voices that. what happened we didn't even talk about Ice Spice today y'all oh shit you want to talk about that real quick Fuck what I gotta say. You sure? I was just gonna say, you know John Middlecoff? Say, well, who the fuck is that? No. <laughs> what? Say, well, who the fuck is that? <laughs> he really sounds so annoyed. He's like, what? Say, well, who the fuck How is dare that? you say no. a name like that who the to fuck me? Is that? You don't know John Middlecoff? You trying oh, to catch I you, me? I thought you said Middlecock. Sorry. You try, <laughs> no, not cock. You trying to catch me? Yeah. No. It's John, a funny shit right now? I, I'm a fan of John Middlecoff. What do you do? He, he, he has a podcast on football. Oh, so my question was going to be, who oh. are your trusted voices when you go to sleep? Because I listen to Colin Cowherd and oh. John Middlecoff. Oh, Sean Evans on Hot Ones. And Angie right. Martinez. Ooh, full circle. This is all I'm saying. Like, okay, 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 that, okay. That's it. But we don't got to stay there. 90 day I just needed to get... <laughs> you know what? I trust him. No, and he's dead serious, guys. I know he is. I trust him. He loves watching 90 Day Fiance. I just wanted us to highlight the people that help us because when you go to sleep to certain things, noises, voices, it's uh, uh, um, it's scientifically proven. Not really. My science. It's scientifically proven (laughs) that you, you, like, that's a trusted voice. I want us to be trusted voices for our listeners. So if you're listening to the podcast, make sure y'all listen to us on your commute, in the shower, or when you're ready to go to sleep. If you listen to us doing any Lex. of those things, that means you really fuck with us. I us. saw a listener listening to us getting head. That's also hey, that fly. <laughs> Yo. That was fly. That was, nah, that, that, that was crazy. Real shit. That was hard. That was crazy. I ain't never seen no <laughs> shit like that. Keep it going. And he Look. posted it. What the fuck? Yeah, Literally. He tagged us. They ain't been him. You got to be hard to listen. So that was hard. <laughs> yeah. So I, I tell just, you. I want us to just be that trusted source yeah. the same way that John Middlecuff. <laughs> I don't is. know if I want people to listen to us to go to sleep because that means we're boring. Facts. No, that means we're comforting. Nah, in yes, we're opinion. comforting. That's a fact. I in, agree my, with that. in my opinion, I agree yeah. with that. It's, it's like, it's like <laughs> I'm going to bring out another comforting show. Yeah, you're right. No, you're, oh, go Martin, Martin, uh, Martin. Martin. Oh, you got Martin? Give us a show. Oh, uh, Food Truck Wars on Food Network. Uh, Modern Family. 
That's what I'm saying. It's a good comforting show yeah. you can watch before. Sl- okay, yeah, you got shit. me. You kind of ate with that. It's not gonna lie. I want us to be somebody's comfort <laughs> show again. Like that. I want to yeah. give a shout out to John Middlecuff. Shout out to John Middlecuff doing all that football analysis and breaking. Yeah, Middlecuff. Shout out to John Middlecuff. Just say it again. Say it like this. Huh? John Middlecuff. No, you say it again. I knew I was wasn't gonna do it. <laughs> I knew it. I just know, know him now. Like, Bro, know this nigga. He's not gonna just do uh, that. John Middlecuff. John Middlecuff. Yeah. yeah. John Middlecoff. Yeah. I don't know how to say that. Like, I don't know how to say that shit. Yo, he's like, let me try to give it a go. I don't even know how to do that shit. Word. He was like, yeah. 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 Middle, middle, yeah. middle yeah. cough or yeah. cough? Middle cough. John Middlecoff. Pretty guy, pretty guy. What? Pretty guy, pretty guy. can't even do it. Pretty guy, pretty guy. Yeah, real quick, we out of here, right? But yo, real quick, I'm sorry, y'all. We were supposed to talk about this. We'll do this in five minutes. It'll probably like be not as time next week anyway. But... Ice Spice, Cleo Trapper, they got into a dispute recently. Reggie, you want to get into it real quick? So Cleo Trappa was asked to by Ice Spice's team to go on her Y2K tour. Very last minute. Uh, Ice Spice's tour is over by now. But um, she was asked the day before. She was like, yo, hey, like I want an opener. Are you down to come? And according to Cleo Trappa, this is a very important part of the story. She was like, hey... I don't know. I don't have time to get stuff together. I don't know my situation. But Ice Spice was like, no, I got you. Like, you're going to be with me. Like, it's fine. Like, basically insinuating, yo, I got you. Like, with the hotel rooms, accommodations, but so on and so forth. And then now, apparently, now she's coming out with a six-part TikTok series that exposes, like, yo... I couldn't even get a meal paid for by them. They put my bags in the street in the rain. I had to carry my bags. I had to get my own room. Damn. And so it was just a lot. Like, go to her TikTok, Cleo Trappa, if you want all the details. We can't get into that right now, but that's Mm -hmm. the situation. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And to Reggie's point, these two ladies were, I guess to the public, it seemed as if they seemed to be friends, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Cleo Trappa has been an uh, internet personality for a while. She's recently converted into a rapper now. So I Spice invited her up, like, hey, you know, you can open for us, etc. Now, what I really wanted to talk about real quick and we can get out of here, managing expectations, knowing what you're dealing with, and most importantly, clarity before you agree to something. Um, Cleo Trapper wasn't paid for this. I'm sure she was okay with that because it probably looked like a look for her. Mm-hmm. But for Cleo Trapper, her what had bothered her was just certain things weren't super clear. Like Reggie was saying, I Spice had told her, hey, you good, you with me. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, in Cleo Trapper mind, she really thought that even when Ice Spice could be rubbing something out, she could be right next to her. You know what I'm saying? My whole point is to saying is Cleo Trapper never necessarily had her own room. Mm-hmm. Um, they went on to different states, and she kind of felt as if her friendship with Ice Spice was taking a hit because allegedly Ice Spice didn't like when on one of the first earlier shows. You know, for the most part, women naturally don't carry their bags, especially when they're performing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cleo Trapper didn't like the fact that after the end of the show, all the security guards, all of Ice Spice's security guards took out all of the luggage for Ice Spice. But when it was time for Cleo Trapper, she had to pick up her own luggage by herself. She met mm-hmm. fans outside that wanted to take pictures and she felt super embarrassed because she was like, damn, man, like. The crew usually handles this, etc. Mm, you know, yeah. I'm just a girl. That's mm-hmm. how she said it. I'm oh, just, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like Ice Spice could have at least told, yo, get her too. Yeah, kind of just thing. like right. just like being considered because she asked Cleo to come on the tour and mm. be like, basically the whole overarching simplified version of it is like, yo, you shouldn't have been more considered for a person that you invited on tour. Yeah. And like Cleo was like, basically saying like yo when i'm done performing like i have nowhere to go like they have no room for me no one's telling me like where to go no one's telling me like they're all eating and they're not telling me that everyone's eating like food food when it comes to food they say that cleo trapper is not a part of their budget Mm -hmm. oh my god she you're not no no but okay so so, 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 let me before you go before you go like when people are ganging like basically the majority is like yo i spice how dare you do that but like and then a lot since then this is a bit very big trending story right now on twitter um people are saying like like tour managers are coming out like uh music industry people are sharing their thoughts and being like yo you guys have no idea how tour works openers this always happens to openers i'm sorry you got to get it how you get it it's part of the game like you're not the main headliner no we're not buying your food for you like a lot of music industry people are saying that but i think the little nuance to it is like they told well i spice told cleo trapper was Last like no minute. you good like i got you yeah. that's why she agreed mm-hmm. but there's so much to it i know i really want to say i want to go because he has been on tour as did alex but like in my opinion i don't know guys like 
there's always two sides to every story. For sure. I know they kill Ice Spice right I know now. Ice Spice probably has her side where like things were misconstrued mm-hmm. and Cleo Trap is just very angry right now telling her side. I just want to say there's two sides to every story. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad you teed it up that way because there is <laughs> no legit. I'm glad you did because there is two sides to every story. And the tour that I've been a part of was a lot different than whatever this woman is going through. The tour that I've been a part of and Alex and I, we toured together on certain legs. Um, we were well taken care of. One, Ooh. we weren't openers, right? Yeah. Much Production. different dynamic, right? It's not like the Needs No Podcast was going on tour with mm-hmm. anybody. This was Savon in a certain role, in a certain position that I was being compensated for. Right. And that, that was the number one priority of me being on that tour. I had a duty. I had a responsibility. And not only did I have a responsibility, but to some degree, the people that I was on tour with had a responsibility for me. Meaning, what I did, what I ate, where I was, although I'm an adult, although I'm a grown-ass man, it was still some liability within that structure. Yeah. Right? Logistics were like... Exactly. So yeah. that's the difference between the, my experience being on tour mm-hmm. with the Cleopatra. Again, a podcast story is very. I said what I said. He said Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Yeah, it's Cleo Cleo Tra- Tra- Trapper. Yeah. Cleo, Cleo Trapper. We're used to Cleopatra. Yeah, Cleopatra. Yeah. It don't roll off the tongue, shorty. It don't right? rework that. But <laughs> I see what she did there, though. I, I see what she did. I see what she did. It's clever. It, it, it's clever. It's, it's clever. I, I see but, what she did there. But the yeah. fact that I even fucked her name up <laughs> like that tells me like you still got work to do, and it's okay. Or we could just learn her name. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean, nah? Do the work. No, learn her name. I'm That's never fucking up Ice Spice. You know why? What? We, you know why I'm we, never fucking up Ice Spice? We know why. She did the work. Okay. Well, mm. Carisha is huge, and you always say her name Carisha. So what is the mm. correlation? She, Carisha, she's no, already did the work. The City Girls is whole, huge. Carisha is a urinal. What? <laughs> Yo, this nigga is <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> well, no, I don't even know what that means. She, like, she said that, Yo. but... <laughs> Regardless, what I'm saying with this instance is a little bit different than my experience on tour than her experience on tour. But you got, you just got it. This is a part of the game, and this is the pro- problem with like the artists and the creatives and entertainers mm-hmm. of today. Mm-hmm. It's where we expect instant gratification. Now, I don't know what Ice Spice or her team may have said to Clea Trapper. Mm-hmm. Maybe she promised certain things and she didn't get it. There's a lot of holes in the story, from what I know. Yeah, but from what I believe a tour to be or what an opening act, like your opportunity is being put in front of an audience. For sure. Right? Your opportunity is exposure. Your opportunity is ex- is travel. Mm-hmm. Your opportunity is being associated with somebody who is Ice Spice, who has been seen and, and, and documented to be associated, affiliated with Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's the magnitude of Ice Spice. Now, how we view her, what we think of her as an artist, is very different than the exposure that she gets. All I know is, I watched the Super Bowl last year and when Usher was there, and when the Chiefs was in that motherfucker, mm-hmm. and when Taylor Swift was in that suite, and every time they showed Taylor Swift, you know who I saw? Ice Spice. Ice Spice. Ice Spice. Yeah. So that that like you do have to understand the opportunity for sure that you also get as a clear trapper. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I, I I don't. Yeah, I'm not on the side of. I'm not on her side on this. I, I, who's, I think, from what I know, who's side? Who's I think, side? I'm not on clear. What's her name? Clear, clear trapper. trapper. Okay. Clear trapper. Just yeah, to not on her side. I'm gonna call it Cleo. All right, Cleo is fine. I think it's a learning curve for mm. the both of them. Yeah. Uh, Ice Spice's first official tour. Like I said, Cleo Trapper, we know her from internet skits. So, again, she doesn't know the dynamic of how a tour is supposed to work. I think my I biggest... I don't... I don't know. What, what you mean, bro? Like, if you've never been on tour before, how would you know it, things are supposed to go they down? They don't even have any... To me, it doesn't even have anything to do with being on tour. If I invite you somewhere, I means I'm I'm pretty much hosting you. Mm-hmm. If if I know or, or at some point or another can see that, okay, you might not know, you carry your own luggage. Um, if, if I Spice even had a had an iota, um, iota of an inkling that that was happening, right? Mm-hmm. If I know you're not eating or somehow or another you aren't getting fed, it's my duty. I bear the burden of, again, I am your host bringing those things to you that you need. I see what you're saying, but this is what I meant by the clarity, right? I know it was last minute and you just got the call the day before this tour started. You need a certain level of clarity from this party. Yeah. Real talk. You feel me? And, and it's not just Cleo, it's Ice Spice too, because this is what happens when you mix the friends with business thing. Yeah, like, they, you, they like just come with me. Yeah. yeah. So, somewhat. Okay. Like, they I'm, were perceived. I'm asking, I'm not trying to. Yeah, like, no, no, push. I know, I know, no. It's, it's because they've had a weird friendship. 
it, you know, they, they had a quick falling out, then they came back up. So okay. even seeing the two of them on tour was like, oh, okay, it looked like they back cool again, right? Even Cleo had reference in the in the reply in the response video, like, oh, I know why you took me on tour. Yeah, you only did it for me for the look to make it look like you're a good friend now. Exactly, yeah. right. So Pierre, I do understand your point and I'm with you. At the end of the day, you should be a good person. Yeah, because yeah, right? it's like mm. it's just like consideration uh, though. Like I get that's me. That's Alex I, okay, saying. Okay, hold that. on. I get that. Like <laughs> an opening that. opening acts, you're not gonna get the freaking charcuterie every time. Yes. Every show. Like you're not the headliner. Yes. But at the end of the day, like it was just consideration. It's like yes. yo, there. It would be things like oh, the whole team mm-hmm. is eating, and Cleo was like Facts. oh, like what I'm team? hungry. Like I spice, I spice, spice, spice you. What team? I, oh, no, well, I'm with you. Wait, I, the Spices no, no, no. team. I'm wait, with but you. also, we have the separate they said that Cleo Trappa could not bring anyone, so she couldn't even bring her team. She couldn't have That's a very an big assistant. Piece. She yeah, couldn't yeah, have yeah. a manager. When they did bring an assistant, she pulled up, and then she had nowhere to stay, so her assistant had to go back to New York. So Cleo was essentially that's by crazy. herself. Yeah. Did she agree to those terms? That's, but see, she that's did. the point. She Let did. me finish, right? That's where I wanted to get at. But right? she did, yeah. It's the clarity of this, right? And, and, and it's double sorted. Ice Spice, if I'm supposed to be. Uh, if you're supposed to be the, the 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 main act of this tour, right? We do know people are gonna naturally heed to you, right? That's natural. Mm-hmm. But again, if you tell somebody I got you, and they pulled up last she, minute, for did you. she tell her that? Like, That's what she, she told said. Her. Yeah, she just, said, "Oh, I don't know, yeah. like finances, alphas, whatever." And then Ice Spice was like, "No, I got you. You're gonna be with me." That's what yeah, she I, said. I got like, you with a look. Yeah, I got you with a look, but that's my point, though. I don't like people who are purposely omitting information. I would rather you be clear and upfront with me so I can know how to move forward with my career. Like, okay, cool. You told me there's not going to be any room. It's only going to be a look. And I gotta figure everything else out. Okay, cool. Let me take that info and, and go see to my what team. I, go yeah. to my team. See what makes sense. Come back with a with a boom. Not me finding out on the road in the moment. That's really that, fucking weird. Yeah, that's and, not even good business. And again, shit, it's, shit it, you said it was all last shit minute. Happens. Right? What do you mean shit happens? I'm just uh, shit happens. Like, shit definitely happens. Bro. I've never heard of Cleopatra until until this. I happened. mean, oh, you always do this. Duh. I mean, but like that's what do you mean? Like, always that's that's like the cop. I always do what? You did it with fucking guys and not duh. <laughs> we know that's not the convo we have. That's a big part of the convo. We wouldn't be talking that's about this the, if I, this didn't happen. So I, just, I feel like I understand what you're saying. I get bro. what you're saying. It's like, yo, Ice Spice gave her a huge opportunity. And now she's on my radar. Like, right? It's like yeah. this is like what but, is wrong with communication things, and yeah. clarity? But also, that does not mean you can mistreat. Yeah, Cleo Trapo. not it's even like, mistreat. Communication and clarity. You're a businesswoman. I'm a businesswoman. I'm talking about the two of them, right? So, as a businesswoman, tell me what it is. Right, I save on. I know you. If you don't get a rundown of everything that you're supposed to be a part yeah, of we're not or doing go it. to, you're not doing it. And stop it. That's and, what I'm saying, bro. And, and every, yeah, I know every time, I know, I know you're not. You did it. I know you're not. I know you're not. I know you. I know you're not. That's my whole point. So it's like with this, and and I'll even go a step further. Maybe maybe she's not smart as me. I don't know who's smart. I'm just talking about when in business, be yeah. clear in communication. Be clear in what it is. So now both parties Understood. could go, all right, cool, this is what we're going to do. No argument. All right, but That's still a crazy situation. Crazy. No, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Savon is right. It's a, it's a look. It's an opportunity. Yeah, but two things could be true. Like, I, sure. I, I'm going to do that for you as a look and, and for myself as a look. But like, yo, look out for me too. Like, I'm coming through for you. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't agree with that because for me, the type of person I am, I take everything with a grain of salt. Maybe because I'm just so jaded from being a child mm-hmm. and everything. Like, I don't like, really believe you. I don't like, believe shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so for me, it's more so if you tell me everything up front, now it's on me. Hmm. That was my decision yeah, 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 yeah. to see what I need to do. And, may, and, and, and again, at the time of this recording, has Ice Spice responded to any of this? She has. Yes, she has. She has. She went see? on Twitter spaces and it did not help at all, in my opinion. Uh, but as yeah, Alex let's, let's... is pulling that up, I, like, I just want to say, like, I wanted to make it clear. If you watch this segment, I was like... Basically, like she, Ice Spice should have been more considerate. She should have mm, taken care sure. of her guests. But I will say, if you watch Cleo Trappa's like series on her exposing all this, I just want people to listen to it and really like. It's long. Let's, no, let's say like playing devil's advocate. If yeah. you really f- mm, see devil. see like how oh, yeah. she's speaking mm. about it, like mm. she's very like mm. telling only her side of the story. Like yo, like you know, Ice Spice's head is so big now. That's why she thinks she's a star and she doesn't care about her opening up. Like she was saying a lot of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I just want people to not just take that like at oh. face value and really form your own opinion. Like you know, you know, you know. I do know, and you know what I know. It's funny you mentioned devil. <laughs> Because I saw a video mm. over this weekend, Ty Lil. this past weekend, yeah, where there was some niggas praying. Ty Lil. Ty Lil. 
Tyler. That's Kosh's yeah. not oh, Tony. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. See, yo, everything is full circle. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the niggas that be praying. Everybody. Tyler. Yeah. He was praying and he was holding Ice Spice's hand. And during that prayer, now me, I've prayed plenty of times in my life. So you sure. know what I do? I close, close my, my eyes, eyes and bow my head. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm going to pray. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be in that moment. I'm not going to be making funny faces and feeling uncomfortable and looking uncomfortable, but everybody's not me. Everybody's not us. <laughs> Everybody got different beliefs and religions, and we salute that. Please believe in what you believe in. But what I will say is very today. interesting. What I will say is very interesting mm-hmm. is after the prayer that, what's that nigga name? Talil. Talil and Ice Spice did together. Mm-hmm. I saw a hand gesture that Ice Spice did. Me too. It looked a little weird. That was, that same hand gesture was also done during the Super Bowl at one point when it, they. It looked a little strange, and it looked like when they was doing the prayer, Reggie. I don't know if you saw the video. <laughs> it did look like a demon was trying to hop up out of ice spice. Like the prayer key. was just. You, know, you ever seen one of the movies and they throw holy water nah, on the you person? Ever, you ever been in church? Trying to do an exorcism with? You ever been in church? For and sure. You seen, yeah, bro. It was either a demon or <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> and look, and it I, like, <laughs> you know how everybody just puts their head down for, for the next two minutes and go, "All right, cool. It's gonna be sixty seconds." prayer I put my head down it looked like her body was doing involuntary movements because it couldn't handle the prayer yeah. the word of God and I only bring this up <laughs> because it was so goddamn obvious it was stark it was, was crazy. so obvious it was I can't of, hey after we let go of hands I'm gonna throw I'm not even gonna repeat throw yeah, up, nah, nah, throwing nah. up the sign nah, I but I saw that. the hand gesture that she made yeah. and you know we, we're, we're not dumb here on the Need to Know podcast <laughs> we, we can make educated assumptions educated guesses right. I would love for her to explain whatever that was she at won't. some point she nah, won't she, yeah. because we all know what it is and cool uh, uh, it's not like if that's what you do do what you do yeah, but yeah just don't when, you, when we hear these reports and when we see all of these things like mm-hmm. are we really surprised no like not, not are you all. really surprised at these reports that somebody did you dirty who throws up these hand signals mm-hmm. and look and seems it's to funny. be like come on we know I these just, niggas be selling their shit like this and i'm not talking about like only fans selling their shit. I know they be selling their soul, soul, soul. Wait, So I just rewatched the video and like the hand signal that she did. Mm-hmm. Is that specific one? Like, does that mean a specific something? Or, oh, or yes. people are just like. No, no, no. It means something okay. very specific that I will very, not repeat. Yeah, very specific. I'll tell you Damn. Because I was like caught in 4K. You know what's was funny too? 4K. Like, you're not even. You're not LeBron. Yeah. You can't get that all <laughs> subtly, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> I just seen an article yeah. this year. I'm talking too nah, much. You shit. We never going to make it. Nah. <laughs> I'm talking too much. No, no, no. We got God. Don't you good, bro. The universe. You good, bro. God got Cause you Because there be these in niggas name, in the Playboy bro. parties hey, and hey. the Luc- Lucifer hey, hey. Verts. Hey. Not the little Lucifer, Uzi nigga. Lucifer, the Lu- Lucifer, Lucifer Verts. Verts. Like, and be them that, was, that, that be going one. there. <laughs> yeah, I, I just saw an article of um, I'm sorry. Uh, Issa Rae. And she, she uh, recently uh, verged into the music industry with her label, Radio. Mm-hmm. And the article was just something along the lines of, the music industry is the most evil thing she has ever worked a part of with the most disgusting crazy I, I believe people it. and i trust these are and, and it's a fucking fact yo especially coming from the film industry right like you're you're accustomed to working with executives all yeah. different types of people up and down the ladder to say that about music and to just really start <laughs> really just be started in music it's like yo it's telling and people know that's not the first time we've again this, yeah, no, there's been a the long history of not the first you know, time things being mentioned and said yeah. it's just a lot of stuff it's that kind of you know where there's smoke there's fire and, For sure. and they know that like the the illest shit and i know it's at the end of this podcast so a lot of people may not even hear this a lot of people may not care but they hide it in plain sight yeah they do it's and always been like that. i'm gonna say this one name and just bleep it just because i want you mm-hmm. know my people that work in the music industry to mm-hmm. continue to to, to to flourish alex reggie like i love y'all so i would never make sure this is on record Mason, bleep this, but (gasps) the biggest one of them all, the biggest of them all, Mm -hmm. like do your research, like they're hiding it, they're showing it to us Mm -hmm. in plain sight, sometimes outside of putting it in a book, because I know that's the stigma around black folks, Mm -hmm. if you put it in a book, book, they'll never find it, it. (laughs) right, they'll never read it, they'll never never see, that's the stigma, I don't believe in that, I know what you mean, but the stigma is, you put it in a book, black people will never find it, the other aspect to that is, if you put it in their face, they'll never find it, so when you go to concerts, and you go to concerts, and I've been to both of these artists' concerts, and please, again, make sure we're bleeping all of these names, but when you go to these 
level of artist concerts. The imagery is so blatant. It's right in your it's face. It's so there. Y'all know, again, bleep this. Y'all know I'm mm -hmm. She's there too. Yeah. And y'all know we love He's there too. Like, they're all there. Um, so Ice Spice, you're no exception. You yeah. just happen to not be a subtle. You're a rookie in this game. Yeah. You're new to this devil shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nah, yeah. I, I, I'm glad that you, you said it, though. It's important to say it, because... I mean, I said it amongst us. They may yeah. not know, oh, but fuck, I said it. But well, we no, it. I get it. We let it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We let it out. Yeah. Yeah. But it's real shit. Nah, for sure. For it's sure. real shit. Just yeah. pay, you know, at the end of the day, just pay attention. Pay attention, y'all. Pay, so, pay attention. This has yeah. been a goodie, though. Y'all good? Y'all anything was. else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been We great. talked about everything. I think so. I think so, too. This right, has been fun. Reggie ready to go home. Reggie like, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm with you. Too. But Reggie like, wait, hold up. We talk about it. But no, this has been great. This is a fun episode. And again, like I said to Kai Sanai, you the one, bro. Yeah. Just this has been the Need to Know podcast. <laughs> what you need to know. When you need to know. On the Need to Know podcast. Okay.